all right. My, my favorite superhero's real name is Barry. It's fine. Who's that? The Flash. Nigga, bear quick for no reason, bro. Listen, the man will punch you in the face. You wouldn't even know. <laughs> that ain't no we'll superpower. See. We'll see. Come That's the <laughs> deadest superpower, bro. What? Super speed? Super speed. Fam, I can travel across dimensions. Man can't even beat properly. What? Done. Exactly! <laughs> One. Done. <laughs> but a uh, certain man we've... Ah, uh, anyway. What, 30 second meetings, yeah? Huh? Is it even 30 seconds? Mm-hmm. Mad team. Is there anyone that we've had on the podcast? Nah. Hey, right, you're not. Bob, you remember when <laughs> you're not for the punishment for that appearance. Listen, it's the Bro, get sued, yeah. <laughs> What's a beads, bro? If he, if he ends up in there, my kid's never doing track, bro. I love it. Alright, if you say so. It's long, get it. Football. I'm telling you, football all day. <laughs> Man, even play football, or nothing. Football, all day. football, or nothing. <laughs> what do you do? Your kids say I want to do ballet. Cool. Okay, do it. I don't hey, mind it. Between got talents. If you want to <laughs> that's the only thing you can do. That's the only thing you're gonna do, if isn't you it? You wanna do ballet? Royal ballet could be cost peas, you know. That's fine. You're gonna be good. I'm <laughs> gonna be good listen, at it. Listen, I'm good with that. But you know what? If you're doing ballet, you gotta do martial arts as well. Car, yeah, it's true, because you'll get bullied. <laughs> <laughs> you'll get bullied, listen, Oh wow. You need to come with some fire. You need to be a black belt within three years. <laughs> within three years? Three years, man. I'll never forget I got bumped in karate, bro. That man bumped me. That thing someone. moving like a shake like Herbalife, man. I got a black- <laughs> That's such a pyramid scheme. I got a black belt. Huh? But I was doing karate for years. You got a black belt from TK Maxx. No, bro. I got a black belt from, <laughs> Le- from <laughs> Levi's. Ishenru Karate. Ishenru? Ishenru. You know the Ishenru. dog, the sensei just went on Google, just typed in Japanese names. <laughs> Pick. It's Sharu. That sounds like the sushi. I was just going to order my sushi bro, from. Ishenru. Ishenru Karate, bro. So you got a black belt? Shotokan. You got a black belt? Yeah. How much you pay for it? I didn't pay for nothing. How much you pay for it? I spent. Claremont. You know Claremont? You can pay for times. <laughs> this place you can pay for belts. £40 pound for a green Fam, belt. <laughs> PayPal. I spent my, my good, hard six years. Oh, who you say money? No. <laughs> six years doing karate and then I stopped when I got into track. Did you use it on anyone? Yeah, in school. I saw you got warn people. No, I don't want no one. This Shop. girl had to warn people. Yeah, I remember this card. Like you had a card. Uh, you like, get a card. Well, hey, I'm getting back to karate. For boxes, no? <laughs> boxes you do. Right, no, because that's that's, that's a that's a myth. You don't like no, no, you. Don't, no. Your your hands are not licensed. No, no, bro. no. You pissed are not me, weapons. You pissed me off. Yeah. That is now on you. No, no. Yes. So you just whack it. So if I just keep. <laughs> What? No. Listen. If, if I put my hands on you, then it's self-defense. Exactly. If you just, if I just piss you off here, yeah, like in no, the back of the no, bus. No, 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 not like that. But if you come and do. No, okay, yeah. You put your hands on me. Okay, yeah. what if I throw stuff at you? You throw, you hit me with something, it left, the projectile left your hand. So therefore you hit Whatever, me. Whatever, what's my mouth? Pause. <laughs> <laughs> what if what? I like a, like a straw and it's paper? <laughs> 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 what if I like. I'll probably. Sh- like it, like it. Karate, karate, karate kid. Like a karate kid just catch a flag. Can you shop six though? No. Well, you're not a black belt karate then. Shut up, man. Either. What's that gonna be a Chinese? Can you use chopsticks? Yes. Very I learned in I learned in year four. <laughs> My teacher was dating a Chinese Donny. He come into class who here. Who learns to use chopsticks in year four? Well, I went to a good school. <laughs> okay, so so basically, what you're telling me is, yeah, at lunchtime. Hey. I love that. I like how your, cameras are rolling as well. Your school. <laughs> man just eat jerk chicken. <laughs> it's all about Chinese. The, the jerk chicken the is very, it's very so diverse right now. So you're telling me that your school didn't have traditional knife and forks, they had chop <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. That's what we're doing. I was one of the only black people in my school. You go to school in Essex, that's not hard. True, true. Did you grow up in Essex? Yeah. I grew up, I, I lived here. Around you the lived in the valley? There. <laughs> you lived at the Yeah, track. yeah, because Lee Valley. You see the blocks over there? Yeah. <laughs> so you lived no, at Lee Valley? I lived in okay. Edmonton. I lived yeah. in Edmonton, around the corner. And then I moved to I moved to Essex when I was one. Okay, so basically for the last 24? 22. 22 years, sorry. You're a bit big, so I always assume huh? you're a little You've bit You've known older. me for very long, sir. I have, but I always assume you're a little bit older. Because yeah. technically- I'm you, childish as hell. Are you still under 23? <sighs> nah. I'm 23 now. Okay. No. So, no, but was you 23? No. Last year, over no. Over the season? No. Okay, cool. Um, I want to go to Europeans, G. I want to go World University, spend 17.50 and then get injured on my ticket. Okay, pause. Can we introduce the podcast? <laughs> like, can, we, can we introduce the podcast officially and then we can get into it? 
Is that okay with you, sir? Wrap it up then. <laughs> Welcome, guys, to another edition of Athletes Productions podcast. Um, I am DJ Armani with my co-host Victor. Um, today we have a different type of guest, um, still track and field related, um, an event that we haven't covered before. We are dealing with Mr. Kai Riley Laborde, one of the top sprint hurdlers in the UK um, for the last four or five years, really, um, which is quite interesting because he's actually still very, very young, but. I'm gonna let Kai introduce himself officially and we'll take it from there. Thank you, my name's Kai Riley Laborde. Like DJ Marnie said, I almost call you by your real name, you know. <laughs> my name Barry. is Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, if, if, Barry said. Listen, if ever you get the notion to call me by my real name, it's Barry. Barry, <laughs> Barry. It's Barry, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Man doing a, a podcast for yeah, SXFM. Yeah, yeah, SXFM <laughs> yeah, what's going on guys? It's Barry in the mix. <laughs> Oh, anyway, go. yeah. Kai Riley Laborde, I'm a 110 meter hurdler. Yeah, that's it. I ain't got nothing to say, bro. All these men got stuff to say. I ain't got nothing to say, bro. I mean, you didn't start there, though. You didn't just come into track and, and started with hurdles. There was a there was a bit of a process that, that got there. I had the maddest process, I think, anyway. So, yeah, I started off doing shot put. I went English schools for shot put. And then that's new. transitioned into hurdles. I went shot put one year, and then I tr I went hurdles for the next year. So where where did the transition come from? Because to go from shot, <laughs> to you know what is? I went um when I got into athletics, it was in school. I never liked school year, yeah. so I was like, all right, this is athletics thing. I get a day off school. Let me just do it. So that's what I done. Started in shot put, but there's a competition called the track and field cup, okay. and I had to do one track, one field event. So I could do the shot put. Mm -hmm. I couldn't run very fast, uh, couldn't run for long. So <laughs> there was these barriers and I was quite <laughs> tall. So I was like, all right, I could just about do it. I was probably the only one in my class that could get three steps in at like under 13. So I was like, all right, cool. Done it, I wasn't good. I remember my first race, I went over the first hurdle, then I went round the other one. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was so <laughs> slow, they even allowed my time. They didn't even disqualify me. I'm, what was the time? Why are you asking questions like that? I wouldn't know. I don't know. It's bro. under 13. 13, isn't it? It's under 13. <laughs> Anything goes. It was slow. I bro. mean, we see man in under 17 running 30 seconds in the, in the A race, so it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it's true, it's true. Nah, um, I don't know what time it was. It was like my first race. I don't know, but my boys were cheering me on. I was gas, bro. I was like, oh, I could do. I was in my K Swiss. I didn't have spikes or nothing. I was enjoying my life, man, but yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm still getting you ran around the hurdle and they said yeah cool we'll, we'll let the time they still allowed it that's what I mean I, I think they just couldn't be bothered to was it YDL <laughs> no it's the track and field cup is that, I mean it was just it was like a competition like is that is that the um, it, the, the thing that's like it's got English school's name but it doesn't have the yeah. same recognition as English there you go schools. that was so it what, so you go as a school the, okay but I don't see the correlation. Like, I never really hear about it. You're asking me, bro. I just I compete. Mean, I've done it. <laughs> I just showed up. I just showed <laughs> up and run. That's all I done, running through. Man, there was no, day off you know what? Because it's <laughs> the best schools in the country. So English schools. Mm -hmm, it's only yeah. English school. I mean, yeah. I'm just guessing by the name, innit? <laughs> all right. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. It's an English school. So yeah, it's cool. Um, okay, so you done shot put. Found your way through hurdles, running around the outside of the hurdles. First race, man. The other ones, I went over them, man. So then... <laughs> Who who started coaching you for hurdles? Like, what made you say, "All right, you know what, I'm don't wanna do so, shot." So, I always self taught myself to do shot because I was a big kid. I was mm. big, so I just throw the ball in it. So, yeah. <laughs> my first competition was the Essex County Championships, and I come second. I think I was like, "Oh wow, like okay, I'm actually right." Yeah, I come second. Yeah. Who beat you? Some guy called Perry Livingston. Does he even still do track? No. Okay. Cool. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Perry Livingston. Shout out Perry from. Probably an IB for doing Molly or something, but anyway. <laughs> so I done that, and then I think I went to Inter Counties in Kingston. Yeah. And I thought nothing about it. It's like my first big competition mm -hmm. under 13. I was like, what the hell? Like, what's all this? Like, I don't know. It's a big step up for Essex Counties. Yeah. Because Essex Counties, you know, county championships these days, you have like four people in the shot, mm -hmm. and everyone still gets a medal. Don't know how. <laughs> You're giving fourth place. <laughs> anyway. So I went. And I was, I didn't expect nothing from me. I was like, oh, whatever. Some big kid. When I tell you I'm big, yeah, there was some big kid. Literally just went like that. 
through above everyone. I was like, oh, this is long. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I started doing it. I was always big. And then I don't know. I just liked, I just liked hurdles. Like mm. no one really, like, you know, in the stands here, yeah? everyone's cheering for the track events. No one's really cheering for like shot put over there, innit? So <laughs> I was like, no, yeah. I would, I would be the long like, like, in the corner. Yeah. Innit? Like, field events get no love. It's fine. You've got mean? a long jump pit that's right in front of the thing. And, and it's and I can't even like long there. jump. I can't lie. I can't do that at all. So. Ooh, whose phone was that? <laughs> it wasn't mine. Well, but yeah, um, I wasn't always, I didn't start off good in hurdles. Mm-hmm. Like I was coming, not even making finals in competitions. I was just coming, I probably won, probably one B race in my life back then. So okay. yeah, I, I wasn't good, but you know what? I, I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And then I started losing weight. So I went from like a good shot putter to a, and a bad hurdler. And I started going like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I didn't really take it serious. I went to a club. I joined Thorough Carriers, my local club. Okay. Had my first hurdles coach there. Yeah. It was great. But it's a story I always tell you. So he was only there on Thursday nights. It was a Tuesday night, Thursday night, typical club night thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was only there Thursday night. So Tuesday nights I had to train with this other coach. And we used to do all this conditioning and running and plyometrics. And I'm thinking, why am I doing this? I'm a herder though. Obviously me being very young at that. So what I used to do, I used to, there was a big field and then shops. So my mom used to drop me off at the track. I'm like, yeah, mama, I'll see you in like an hour and a half or whatever. <laughs> and I'll walk over to the field, go get fish and chips. And I'll just eat that for an hour and a half, just sit there by myself. <laughs> Bro. And then I used to come back. And then my mum would pick me up. I was training. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Like, I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, confessions, isn't it? This <laughs> mum's not watching now. <laughs> oh, this is the thing. I got clocked. So it was one time I was like, you know what? Let me just try this Tuesday session. Let me see. She had me doing burpees. I was like, nah. <laughs> I was like, you see that? Yeah, I was like, I said it to her. I stuck it on it. I was like, I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm a hurdler. Why am I doing this? Bear dumb. Oh my gosh. I think I'm so dumb. And then I walked out. Went mm-hmm. to go get my fish and chips. Same routine. Yeah. Next time thing, my mom takes me home, whatever. She calls my mom. You know, like when you're in trouble, like back in school, and yeah. they call, they, the teachers call your parents while you're there. You're like, you're trying to hit <laughs> people, try and mind your business like it's nothing. I heard her and she was like, yeah, um, Kai, like, did you pick him up early or something? Cause he came and then he left. And she's like, no, like I've been doing this all this time. She's like, oh, well he ain't been attending. So that's how I got caught. <laughs> my mom grounded me for quite a while. And then I had to do the Tuesday sessions and then that's punishment. That's punishment. <laughs> Listen, I've been punishing track. My PE teacher got me into track. Let me start from the start. My PE teacher got me into track. Mm-hmm. I only want to do track to get out of class. Yeah. I didn't want to. Tra- <laughs> I did not want to train or nothing. So he knew I did not want to train. So the times we trained was in lunchtime and breaks. I just want to be with my friends. Yeah. Any little thing, yeah. This guy used to give me detention. In detention, we'll train. <laughs> so it was a loop kind of thing. So yeah. that's how. I was forced to trade and it was like, not a punishment, but I just didn't want to do it. I did not want to trade. My teachers, my teacher at the time, shout out Mr. Gibbons. So my coach's name is Ray Gibbons with an yeah. I. And my, the first guy who got me into athletics, his name was Dick Gibbons. Richard Gibbons. Okay, bro, I, was gonna, Dick. I was gonna say like, is his name Richard by any chance, but. No, of course, I, man. You're the Essex man, bro. They like yeah. to shorten their names. <laughs> where, did that, where did that even come from? I would, re- if anyone knows where Dick comes from Richard. If you understand the process of that, please that let me know. Unknown banter. Dare me, DJ Money One. <laughs> <laughs> little shout out. Why not? Get yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> so, uh, how did you then <coughs> decide to say, you know what? Obviously, you got caught, <laughs> and then you had to you had to train. Did you then focus? Like, did you focus on it in training, or were you just like, just go because I have to go now? <laughs> I was I was really competitive, so there was another boy there that was really good at hurdles. He was probably the best in the in the district. Okay. And I remember I don't know if you guys remember Akeem. I can yeah, tell yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he will from the same area. Mm-hmm. So I remember his race was for for my hurdles. So he literally went round that bend and just eased up, walked over the line. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do that in my final. Breeze the hurdles. This is when I started getting it right. Breeze yeah. the hurdles, and then I tried to walk over a line like a bad man. This guy come out of nowhere, dipped <laughs> me, beat me. I was like, <laughs> I've just embarrassed myself. But we both went to end up going to the same club. So mm. 
we had that little rivalry kind of thing. So I think that's what got me fueled my energy to carry on hurdles. Okay. Yeah. So it's the fact that and he was quite cocky and arrogant as well. So that really peed me off. So I just had to. I just sh- I just show him the levs, man. I mean, it didn't. It took her a long time. I'd, yeah. What I was thirteen back then. <laughs> took me like showing three the levs, years. Showing the levs at thirteen. I tried, but I was still doing shot. My excuse here, he was a full hurdler. I was doing multi events. I was doing. Why are you looking at me like yeah. that? So if I go on your paraton, am I going to see like a gun? A gun. Victor, take over. Let me, let me One one eighty eight high jump. Don't ask what my long jump is. Nah, it's alright. We'll find it. Thirty something kid javelin. What was your shot put like then? Like, my shot put, uh, my see. I peaked. I didn't peak, but my best time was under fifteen. I come second at the national champs. And I think I threw. F- I don't know. He's gonna get the. He's gonna get the facts right now. Right. But right, so we have. This is this is gonna be a bit all over the place. So, sixty meters. Seven. Ah, oh, relax. Bro. <laughs> that's, that's not even in the, in multi events. Ten ten seven, for a hundred meters. Pretty quick. He's done a four hundred. We've got him uh, fifty five oh five. Uh we've got him <laughs> Hey don't say the eight and don't say the fifteen. No, relax. Um, I'll bail out your government. We have a two fifty nine eight hundred. No, but tell him what it was though. Don't you're saying like I, it was this year. To be fair, that was twenty ten. Twenty ten, we're ninety that was nine years ago. <laughs> yeah. We have a a five minute forty uh, 1500. That I was chatting to the the, the parents were worried about <laughs> For, Oh, you know, <laughs> you know them words. <laughs> like, bro, I got That's this. I got, I got injured enough and I got this. 10, 7, 80 meter under 16 hurdles? Yeah, so that was track and field cop. Okay. Got, got the record there as well. Okay, do you still have beat. the record? No, nah, I got beat. Oh, sorry. Yeah, um, 60 meter hurdles, 774. Under 20s, you ran 766. Under 17, you ran 811. Under 15, 9, 7? Yeah. 2010, it's all right. Somebody, you, can tell, you, some, can tell, you can tell the shot put times, oh, isn't it? Some of these are backdated. Uh, he does actually have a 188 high jump. Thank you. Fair enough. Uh, I will... No that's, long, that's no, no long jump then. I, I can't lie. <laughs> no, nine, no, nine. no, no. Don't watch the long jump. <laughs> no, no, don't no, watch no, the no. long jump. There's a 556 long jump here. The, the two of them don't correlate, but he's a big one. <laughs> it's fine. Shot put, let's say, okay. He was actually a fair decent shot for the 4K. Wait, just what, short what? 4K, what age group is that? That is- Under 15. He threw 14 meters 81. That must be like top five. I was top. second. I was ranked second or third in okay. the country then. And then we've got a 1345, but obviously I think that's when he started to go more down the- uh... That's under 15, that's under 17 though. Okay, here we go. We have <laughs> oh, oh shit. a pentathlon under 15 and a octathlon. Octathlon, yeah, eight events. In under 17. One of which he did not finish. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about that, yeah. Why did you not finish? <laughs> cool. All uh, right, cool. So, English schools, yeah. I think this is the one he gates said. So, this story, yeah, this English schools has changed my life, all right? Okay. So, this English schools. So, like I said, I went to shop put for one, and then I went for hurdles for another one. So, this one, I think I was top year under 17. Mm-hmm. These times there was about four of us under 13 too, which was at the time mad. You got people yeah, yeah. running sub 13 now, which shout out to them in it. But back mm-hmm. then 32 was mad. And I remember I went to Essex Counties and I ran 13 one eight. I ran my PB to a minus two or something. Mm-hmm. And I think number one was 13 one seven, 13 one six. So we was okay. all so close, but I was so gassed. So me being gassed, didn't really take it seriously. Obviously it's all English schools, you know, TV mm-hmm. and all of that. I missed prom, like, like it was mad like i proper went hard was that a debate like prom yeah it was English schools. yeah one million percent all right 16 fair enough yeah well, there you go but then obviously i wouldn't be on tv and like show off to my friends yeah but yeah um ends up going there and we end up what happened basically i flopped i flopped i can't lie i went into that race cocky cameras on me it's on youtube i was doing the most BS, yeah. Okay. I had texturized hair, I had fake earrings. I ain't got my ears pierced. <laughs> I had magnetic earrings from Claire's accessories, bro. I don't know who the hell I thought I was. I thought I was the guy. I come like sixth or seventh, yeah. That changed my life, bro. I was like, I am gonna be so humble for now on, yeah. But then the guys who beat me, they've never beaten me, so I was pissed off. Mm. So 
I was like looking at races, like, okay, where are these guys gonna be at next? You know, back then, like, you used to check Power Ten, you used to, it was like Facebook times, you used mm. to check their thing, like, where they're gonna be racing next. I see one of them was racing at Octathlon. It was like as if like I was trying to get vengeance, like revenge or something. Yeah. So I was going to each competition trying to pick them off. <laughs> so one of them was at this motor events one. So uh, I contact I contacted a few people, got into the motor events yeah. on the first day. That's why some of them were very poor. Fifty five seconds for four hundred, freaking all that other crap. Came to the hurdles now, yeah. I went I hit that hurdle so hard, like that race, like I licked that guy, bro. <laughs> and I was satisfied for me. I went home. <laughs> Literally, I went home. I didn't finish it. I had a call from the Essex managers like, oh, why are you finishing? Whapping to you. I was like, oh, kind of hurt myself in the hurdles. But I'm like, they're like, oh, you're never going to represent Essex again, whatever. Like, they literally banned me. I was like 17, 16. They tried to ban me from Essex for life. I was like, I don't care. I don't know what I need to do. Tell them Modi, yeah. Basically, Modi. Basically. I don't care. <laughs> I do not care. Anyone who doesn't know who Modi is, top boy, Netflix, check it out. Hey, you know someone told me I'm too hood to watch. No, Top Boy's too hood for me. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. I'm not gonna. How laugh. could they say it's too hood for me? I, I'm gonna breeze past that one for Thank now, you. and I'm gonna come back to it later. I never watched Top Boy in my life. <laughs> I ain't watched Top Boy. I ain't watched Black Panther. I ain't watched none of nothing really. You never watched Black Panther? Nah. Okay. You know, into the Avengers thing then. Nah. I watched Joker last night though. That was some BS. Bro. <laughs> what the hell was that guy? Bro? I'll spoil I mean, it for everyone. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't that, that, yeah, it's everyone. crap, bro. But anyway, <laughs> sorry, it's not because I'm not into all that stuff, innit? I was forced. It's all right. Yeah. It's fine. We'll come back. We'll come back to your private life. We got, private we, life. We got some good stories here. Yikes! <laughs> I, I know we got some good stories here. So okay, under seventeens um, didn't go the way you planned. Nope. Um, under twenties first year. I think for some some athletes it is the hardest year because uh -huh. you're now bottom set and you've also got guys who are like 19. So that third year, I never knew what third year was till I start racing these guys. And you know what? It's it's not like 100 meters, 200, 400 where, or long jump where you you got like, we got different implements in hurdles. Mm -hmm. So the hurdles went higher, which I think probably benefited me in a way because I was still a big guy. I was mm. taller. So like, instead of like cutting my strides, I was able to, just go with the flow kind yeah of thing. so yeah i didn't really back then my my aim was still english schools i still had the under 17 aim like i was still pissed off from under 17 so i was like i want to go to schools and i'm i'm on smoke in it even though i was under 20 so yeah. i don't know but i think it was off my first race the guy who won that i raced him at the first ydl mm. and i was so scared going into it because obviously no one knows what anyone's doing in training. It's like when Instagram first was out, people just do like snippets and all that. So you're like, crap, what type of shape's he in? Like, <laughs> maybe we come, um, I think we raced at Basildon. So it was a local track to me. Yeah. And never I was like, damn, you ain't never heard of it. Never heard of it. Uh, never heard that's of deep, in, that's uh, deep in the sticks. Basildon is, is a good track, it's fast. It's right, yeah. Um, I think China had it for the Olympic games, warm up track, I think. Warm up thing, yeah. What, price increase, yeah. China's been on our Price going up. Price <laughs> going up. It's twenty pound. Twenty pound for a track session. Listen, the way that man are running, hey, I would too. But yeah, um, we raced, and you know when like I was, oh, I can't even describe it. I done better than I thought I would, mm -hmm. and then the time showed as well. So I was like, whoa, like I'm actually because by then I think a few people have ran, like some under twenties, like nineteen years old, they already ran. Yeah. So I saw the I saw the bar. But I was chasing English school standard. So saying English school standard was like 15 free. I ran National like, standard? Yeah, for senior. Okay. Something like that, or 49, let's say 49, I don't yeah. know. I ran 14 free. I was like, whoa. I was like, was it like, like what's the wind? It was like minus 0 0.1 or so. I was like, whoa. So from then I was like, okay, like this is actually better suited to me kind of mm -hmm. thing. But that was like, that whole year was a whole game changer, man. Like, okay. I learned a lot. I made my first GB team. My whole aim was English schools, but I ended up making a GB team. First year on the 20? Yeah, Europeans, Four. 2013. I went to Rieti. Um, missed out the final by 0 0.01, but Ouch. I was sick. Yeah, I got the flu out there. The same way I'm, I'm talking now, so I don't know if everyone can hear you. I'm sick right now, but I was sick out there as well. Thank so. you for coming out where you have a cold. We'll get no. some limbs for you. And nine Please. And we're outside, isn't it? <laughs> you might try to kill me. Who, I don't know, who decided to come outside? 
That was my choice. That was my choice. <laughs> <laughs> you decided to come outside and do, do it. For sure, right, man. If you want to get some tan inside, innit? Plus, plus 10 following wind. It's fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Lovely. And whistles. Whistles. Bell, bells bro. and whistles. <laughs> All right. So, miss out on the final. 0.01. Got to be tough. At the time, like I said, my whole aim was English schools. Yeah. So this was a bonus. I did not, under, I wasn't really processing all of this in my head right now. Mm-hmm. So after English schools, I think a couple of days later, we ended up going to Europeans. And I thought just another English schools, but abroad, to be honest, I didn't really take it that seriously. Um, at the time when I was sick, I didn't want to race or nothing. The, t- the managers, the, whatever they're called, this. I don't know what they're called, but they, the, team coach, managers. the team coaches <laughs> out there, they're trying to motivate me, like, come on, Kai, like, we picked you for a reason, kind of thing, like, just go out and run. In the heats, I ran 200 off my PB. So I was like, okay, I'm still, like, I'm still all right, even though I'm sick. Yeah. Then the semi finals, I just felt like poo, man. I just felt like crap. So I was ready to motivate. I already lost in my head, didn't it? So when that guy, the guy was literally here next to me, I was in lane eight, he was in lane seven. Was that is that lane eight? Was that lane? I don't even know. I mean, if we're looking at the track. That's lane one. Right. Lane one. We just have to look at the track. Amen. <laughs> All right. I was in lane one. He was in lane two, and he just hit me by zero point zero one. And at the time, going into it, before the race, I was like, I don't even care where I finish. But after, yeah, I was like, damn. If it was that little bit, because that that whole time could have like me making that final could have changed Everything. where I am today. Exactly. Mm. So that was a party people, but. I still enjoyed the time though. Forgive when you me. Were sponsored through that, like when you went, not by a shoe, but I had a long-term sponsor that I'm still with now, Cedar Hall. So they gave me like massage. They give like their osteopath in Essex. So they like give me weekly treatments and all of that. So going yeah. into that, that's probably the only sponsorship I've had. So yeah. On sponsorship, you've done. You, you've um, your accolades are quite high. Um, in terms of making mm. teams, uh, medals that you've won over the years, and sponsorship still a bit of an issue. Like, why do you think that is? And you I want to and I want to touch on a point um, as well for something that happened to you earlier this year. Uh, oh shit! Here we go had. again. <laughs> so I want to I want to touch on that as well. You know, with sponsorship, yeah. I've always wanted to be that guy, like. Shout out, shout out Nike for sending me all of this, blah, blah, blah. Because mm. I, I did have a deal. I had a little deal with Sweatshop Adidas kind of thing yeah. for a year after Still right there. Europeans. And it was just like, I don't know, not the standards, not the expectations, but I've, you can see in these athletes, like they expected to, obviously they got hit, hit yeah. times to get certain stuff or to stay on that sponsorship. So I'm just glad I'm not one of them because I know I'll definitely crumble. Mm. Well, I would have crumbled. Not now. I would have crumbled. But I would. I don't want to be chasing times. I want to enjoy track. I want to just run for running sake. Like people saying they're running and for grow. fun. Yeah, it does grow into this sport yourself. Yeah, exactly. I don't yourself. want to have this expectation of people thinking, okay, well, he's on this, so he has to run this, or he has to come. Like, nah, man. Like, well, it would be nice. That's an interesting thing, because obviously now the World Championships is on, and there's a few expectations out there. Mm. And... Have you been watching it? Have you watched any of the, well, like the sprints? Oh, um, yeah, I watched <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, me, DJ Barney, we went to a little, me and a few of our friends, we rented an apartment just to watch 100 Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You heard about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yikes. That, <laughs> was, that was a whole situation. That was a whole situation. <laughs> I don't know if you should even talk about that, but yeah. So that's the thing, like, it, obviously we had three guys go, the expectations of from the general public that don't know about the athletics world would probably be one of them should have meddled. Yeah. When realistically, if you go on times that people have done, I think it was just about right. Like the grass, no one expected him to win, mm. like, to, to medal. I think if you had gone by it before the race, you'd have probably gone Coleman, Gatlin and Simbini, most likely, or yeah. um, Zaniel in the mix. Um, Cause Zaniel was in, he was in great form. Yeah. He just didn't have a great competition. And, you know, he did it very well in the relays. But do you think the expectation they're putting on athletes when they go to those competitions is why a lot of them don't actually perform as well? Because only till recently, in the Olympics, yeah, 
everyone wakes up in the Olympics, wasn't it? Yeah. But the World Championships, it sort of be like, I think this is the first one I've seen where people have been interested in watching it. You think? Yeah, because ev- people. You know what? I think it's the world of athletics don't really watch the world championship. I think this is the first one where Instagram it's everywhere. Everyone you know what? speaking about it's it. It's because of you the memorable times, not memorable times, but the moments. Like you know, when early in the season when them two guys, LSU and who was the one Texas when they had that yeah, little yeah. rivalry, people that blew up when that guy dived over the line. That oh, blew yeah, up. Yeah. There's been just parts in athletics that people like it took an it interest slowly like, waking yeah. up into it. And it's a shame that it's taking that kind of stuff to notice our sport. Not like from, okay, this guy is like Barshim, the only, one of the only guys, the only guy in high job to retain his title kind of thing. That is a bigger achievement and than he's him. jumping over a car. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But unfortunately, that's what people want to see. People want to see moments like that. So I'll never understand those because if that goes wrong, there's so many complications that come with that um sorry i mean what <laughs> um there's a guy um jj can't pronounce his last name but he's a long jumper there's a thing where he jumped over like three minis into a sandpit so <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally <laughs> so there's like a runway yeah three minis and then the sandpit okay it's like elevated but my thing was what, what if he up? like i mean you see it often where jumpers just run through because you know the steps weren't right yeah so imagine he done that or he bailed out <laughs> mid-air yeah lands on the car <laughs> listen yeah that's your career done you know but that's a good check in your pocket as well you gotta forget man we're not getting paid like hey, people got, think we are short my, 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 listen, <laughs> my yeah. face, I'm freaking my short was like, Look, if you hurt yourself you got the best we're gonna cover you you're good but at the same time, that check he probably got from that could have funded his whole next season kind of thing. There's yeah. the, I found out there's dons in Scotland that run against horses. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, Sean Crawford run against a giraffe like or a zebra <laughs> many years ago. There's some kind of like Celtic- Man no, versus Celtic, beast. Dude. Some next thing like that, yeah. And they're like doing all these stuff. They're just running down hills and whatnot. And they're getting paid good money. Like, I will do, do that. I will do that. <laughs> I'm too uncoordinated for that. I'll fall over. Oh no, I'll definitely break a bonus. I got neck knee. I got neck knee. Neck knee. <laughs> <laughs> neck knee. <laughs> I mean, I got knock knee. So if I run downhill, something's going wrong. I'm oh, breaking yeah. a bone or something. Really? <laughs> ACL gone, patella tendon gone. Something's going wrong. Cause it's like, uh, there's that com- um, TV show in China where about seven people lie on the floor. A lot of the Australian athletes do it. Where they go over and you just have to jump over this many people. And playground games, man. I used to do that for <laughs> fun. You know it's what? Yeah, our sport is a Japanese joke, one. <laughs> it's a Japanese one. But they're getting love. They're getting money from that. But why is it? Why Cause haven't we got that in the UK? Because <laughs> no one was ever. We got total wipeout. That's what people want to see. Athletes going total wipeout, get wiped out, done. We ain't got. <laughs> we ain't, they tr- the, you know what? The British public, because I studied media communication, did it? Yeah. Their man just want to watch. These Love Island media and communication. Okay, I didn't hear the last part. I heard. <laughs> oh, I apologize. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's Sorry. It's fine. So, yeah, their man just want to watch these reality TV shows like Love really? Island. That's increased in the last year or so. The number of TV shows like that have increased massively. Yeah. And it's just like, you just sit there and just watch TV. Just Bro, like, there's the <laughs> show just, that just people there watch and just watch it constantly. People sit at the sofa to watch other people sit at the sofa watch TV. <laughs> Tell me that is not nuts. Imagine, no, because because I've done my work experience at a production company, innit? So what, my Michael role. <laughs> I think that's the stupidest program Listen. in the world. I can't watch it. So my role was I had to think of ideas for TV shows, create it, think of like people to be in it, and then give it to. A producer, then hopefully, if they like it, they'll go pitch it to either ITV, Netflix, all of that. I want to know who thought, who sat in office, like, hmm, let us, let's think of a show where we get normal people to sit down watching telly. I want to know how that banged, like, how you went to what, ITV or wherever that is, <laughs> yeah. and mm-hmm. pitched that. And the dumbass, whoever <laughs> thought it, was like, you know, that's a good show, you know, let, let's, let's, let's hey, bang it's that. Banged. 
and he's bad. <laughs> but bad. what does that show? What does that tell about our audience? Our the Great Britain people. We watch fuckery. <laughs> fuckery. <laughs> That's basically <laughs> what it is. Them man don't want to watch a Dolly, a Dolly's, and that's the thing with athletics as well. They rather watch someone in running a straight line and not watch like a discus throw or something like yeah, technical but then, kind of thing like that. I mean, for me, I've been I've been watching track and field for years, and up to now, there's still events that I don't show as much interest in if I don't know who's in it. Yeah, and I think that's part of the problem. Like, there are specific events that just get the limelight. Like, we could have a world record in, in the discus, yeah. but you wouldn't really hear about it. You might get two two shout out, mm. but that's about it. I mean, triple jump. Yesterday, um, I want to say she's not Cuban, but she's something Spanish. But something Rojas, Spanish. Ro- Rojas, Colombia, Colombia maybe. She know. jumped 1537. That's like one of the longest jumps for years. Mm. I'm not a stats man, so I can't say for how many years. But that got one showing. Now for me, when you're jumping that far, or and she jumped like a 1541, which I believe is either nine or 10 centimeters away from the world record. Yeah. I would be featuring that event so heavily yeah, but no one cares, on man. that day. No one cares. Like let's be let's be real. Let's be real, yeah. No one cares about them events there. Of course. Like them man trained so hard to beat these these records that obviously are be broken by drug test drug users Germans. and whatnot. Yeah, so it's just, it's it's sad, you know. And even he did break a world record, like the the four hurdles world record. Yeah, no one cares. Oh, you know what? That, that was, was an amazing race. race. No one cares. If it's not the hundred, if it's not the two hundred, if it's not the relay, no one cares. Well, it's like they they um, hi, they were saying about like the world's fastest man, blah blah blah. Okay, cool. Oh. But that's the world's fastest man for that event. You know what I hate when they. Compare these footballers to athletes, but oh, we're not. Well, yeah. we can get into that. We can get into that. Get into that. But again, like I was saying, the world's fastest. You're saying the world's fastest man, but you only use that for one particular event, which is a hundred. Yeah. So, when you come to the two hundred, is he not the world's fastest man for that event? You don't use the same things yeah. for that event. So you you just they say, should specify. I think they should because you are the fastest man for the hundred. You are the fastest man for the two hundred. You are the fastest woman for the hundred. You are the fastest woman for the two, yeah. and so on and so forth. You are all the fastest people of that event, or the winners anyway. Yeah, but but it's literally if it's not the hundred, go away. Basically, go so because we got short attention spans as well. Okay, that's it's only nothing, you know. Sub ten after maybe. Coleman won. Did you think he got promoted as the fastest man? As when he well back in the day when obviously Bill did it, it was everywhere. Like it was on telly everywhere. I don't think I saw it enough. I think apart from the day where I was watching it, and before the two, they will get, Michael Johnson would go back, they would talk about it, but that was it. Yeah. I had, had like I didn't saw anything, but then I went on Facebook, on the BBC website, yeah. everyone was going in, everyone was going in a Coleman. Obviously, we don't know if he's on drugs. He's came out. He's not. I'm gonna do what and I do at school with a thumbs in purple here. <laughs> and <laughs> it, he, he missed three bands, yeah, it's done, over and done with. It's come to the competition. It would have been tested or it will be tested again. So yeah. either way, just give the man what he deserves. Yeah, give him his props, he's, man. He's worked hard to get to where he is. It's, it's not, people I, acting like you take drugs, you just go on the I, track and run. You still <laughs> put in the work. <laughs> but oh. you know, everyone is <laughs> I'm sitting here with this everyone stand, but I'm is, keeping it here. Everyone is still like, they were just like, well, first was a drug shit. Second, a drug shit. And then- everyone, Cause it's, they, it sounds more interesting than, oh, look at this guy, he's done really well with. They want some, they want to spice it up. This is the media controlling okay. the let's, narrative. Then let's spice it up. Because when Christine went and won her world title in 2007, and two, and then she got an Olympic medal. I think she won 2008. And then she got another world medal. And then she got another Olympic medal. Mm-hmm. Y'all weren't spouting that same kind of talk because it's homegrown. But if it was, if it was Dwayne now, Dwayne could just be in the race and you lot were talking smack. Of course. Now, keep that same energy. Christine missed three tests. She got reinstated and picked for the team the day after her ban. 
yeah. the day after. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So <laughs> exactly, this, because this, it wasn't out. <laughs> this, this, uh, so I mean, it's the media, man. Like, you, it's, you, the, it's the government body covering They want to pick and choose yeah. who they want to be running talk on. And for me, you can't do that. Keep that same energy going forward. Cram, Cole, IAAF, whoever it is in control, keep that same energy. If you've got one person- I met Sepco free, once, actually. I don't like him. <laughs> if you've got- <laughs> If you've got this person who's misfree test and you've also got this person who's misfree test, yeah, treat them the same. Same rules apply. Same one million rules. percent. Same rules apply. Don't try to diminish one guy and then you're keeping this one in, in the highest of praise. Because ain't she like an MBE, OBE, something, something, something. Christine, yeah. <laughs> but, she like mi- but she missed three tests, bro. Yeah, so but keep that energy. Olympic, she won Olympic gold. You know keep what? You can actually get away with murder, I reckon. If, you, if you've got Olympic gold. Why'd you say that? Because Olympic gold for some for Great Britain is mad. If it's not like, especially from track and field. Because it's rare. It's rare. Like you actually get MBEs off that. So you're telling me if I just commit myself, take a bit of drugs, <laughs> win the medal, <laughs> must get MBE. I'm, I'm patterned for life, bro. I'm putting on my CV, I'll get any job. I went for KPMG, I don't even know what that is. So are you saying, are you... What? So are you... <laughs> <laughs> What? Are you anyway, <laughs> are you anyway, to back to my story about under, under 13, <laughs> 2013, yeah. All right. Okay, cool. We'll go with it. Um, Moving mad. What's wrong with the man? <laughs> oh, yeah. So in 2015, you came second in the British trials. Was it 2015? I don't remember. I think I got, I think I got that right. Your medals, bro. I come second 2017. 2017. 2017. Oh, that was my year, man. On and off the track. Oh, if I tell you I've been off the track. Ah, I enjoy my best life, bro. So what did you get from after that after that day? After that all happened? Uh, Where did you go from there? So 2017 was also the whole aim that year. So what me and my coach do, like start of every year, we would pick up where we like um no, nah, let me start again. We will have a meeting and then we'll be like, what's the aims? What are we aiming for? Yeah. How are we going to get there? Kind of thing. So long, short-term goals. So then it was the under 23 European Championships. So I was the last year. I went in 2015, I went there. Didn't make out the heats, no surprise. So I was like, you know what? It's my last year. And I'm not just going there to make the final. I'm going there to, to win. win. So it's top I, age now, isn't it? Yeah, standard was thirteen eighty. So I was like, okay, that's achievable. I ran thirteen seven seven or something. So I was like, yeah, no, no, I didn't. I ran thirteen, yeah, I ran thirteen seven seven or something. So I was like, all right, game, it's, it's on. So the whole season, I can't lie, it was beautiful. Everything went to plan. I won the under twenty three nationals. Won. Don't know what else I won actually. I I done a lot of races and it went really well. Love for international but, under twenty threes second under twenty three first British champs second. That's yeah, so going year. into the, so going into the British champs, I there was no show of Posy, no show of Clark, Charbon, all of the bad, all those yeah. girls. So it was very open. Uh, prior to this, I think it was under twenty threes. I think I yeah I ran like. 137 or something. So I was like, okay, like, I mean, the shouts, like, Donnie's, Donnie's who in that race were running about 138. One guy ran like 35. So I was like, okay, like, it's, it's kind of open. Like, mm. you know, if hurdles, anything can happen. Yeah. So went into that. No, didn't have no expectations because I think the year before I come like sixth. Mm. I think it was my first time and I come like sixth. So I was like, oh, this is poo. Senior, senior champs. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I ran that race. I can't remember. I can't, I can't, like, I do not remember it at all. I just remember crossing that line. No, that was it. Okay. So there was a favorite there, but the way he was moving in warm up, yeah, you could tell there was something wrong with him. Mm. Not mentally, like he was injured or something because he's trying to hype himself up. Yeah. So a few of us looking at each other like, okay. Because in our call up, yeah, everyone's, I don't know, with other events, but we're all cool with each other. Like, mm. what do you say? You good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we'll chat. So we're looking at him like, what is, is Donnie all right? So whatever, whatever, go on the track now, announcing everyone, whatever. He's just there, popping in his face. You don't usually do that, innit? So you can just yeah. tell the body language different. I know I shouldn't be, but I was just bare focusing on him <laughs> in my first three hurdles. <laughs> so, cause I was like, if I'm up with him, I got a good chance of running a good time. So yeah. went out now, 
Donny's up there, up there, then he just falls back. So I was like, okay, if he's falling back, Kai, that focus your bad. ass. You got this. So powering, powering, powering. Come second now. I was like, oh, snap. Okay, like, that's not bad. Mm. But I didn't think much of it because my aim was the Europeans on the 23s. That was yeah. my aim. Even if I got selected for the Worlds, yeah. I didn't care. Because that year, I ran 13.59. That was my PB. So mm-hmm. I don't know what the standard was. 13.4 or something. So I come second. So all I had to do was run. All I had to do. But I had to <laughs> run like a tenth of my PB to go Worlds. Yeah. Didn't really care about it. I just want to go Europeans. So yeah, went Europeans. No, before that. So after that, I had a training session. Everything, like I said, everything going well. Finished now. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I got some injury here in my, in my thigh. Mm. To this day, I still don't know what happened. And basically, from there, all the way until you, that European heat, I did not step on a track. That was probably about a good two weeks. I did not step on a track. Shout wow. out. Shout out Nat, yeah. Shout out NXS Performance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. NXS Performance. <laughs> yeah, because that guy literally, like, he helped me a lot. He gave me all these drills to do off the track, just little exercises to do just to... Because no one knew what it going, was. Yeah. Because yeah. in my head, I was like, crap. I'm like, I don't know. I was like, I'm going to be all right. In my head, I was like, I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. But I did nothing on the track mm-hmm. for two weeks. So I was just, when it got closer and closer, I remember we went out to Poland in Big Gosh, where it was. And I had a little run out. I still got a video, actually. I run out here. Yeah, and I got like my first leg out, and which I hurt. And it was still hurting after two weeks of resting it. Mm. I was like, shit, I'm in trouble. So, I don't know. Shout out, I can't lie. Shout out the medical team because their man were by my side. Like, I was getting acupuncture. I was getting everything. Like, <laughs> everything but drugs. I was <laughs> so, sure. I was literally... <laughs> I was Are literally, you sure it was acupuncture? <laughs> I don't know. I might have put some little, little psych in there still. But I was on like... No, no. I was on anti-inflammatories. Okay. But... I was so paranoid and I wanted to run. Like I was doing like little, I'll rest for like 10 minutes in the hotel and I'm like, oh, I ain't feeling it. So I'll go in the hallway and I'll start running. <laughs> I'll be like, shit, okay, I kind of feel it. Let me stop, just rest, <laughs> kind of thing. I was doing that continuously for the like, for the next three days before the heats. Yeah. <laughs> Went into the heats now, bandaged up. See everyone hurdling, I couldn't hurdle. I was like, Kai, this is do or die. At least do the heats in it. I saw my heat list. I was like, okay, this is like, do it. I, I could do it doable, yeah. It was first, and there was no semis and two people that were favorite pulled out yeah so i was like i was like okay this is good like this is a sign ran the heat now For, like i said first time i stepped on track since i hurt myself and did run the fastest and i remember messaging a group chat yeah and i remember just nat say like no nah, he's good he's good and just the faith like you bad had in me like just motivate me i was like you know what i got this i was in pain i was in pain <laughs> But I was like, I got this. Adrenaline, isn't you it? know, when you hear the octaves go up, like that's a real talk, oh, bro. Like, I, I cried, fam. I cried because I remember the next day now, the final, every man on job. Mm. My trading partner, not trading partner, but a boy I trained with, James Weaver, yeah, he was on job. Everyone was on job, yeah. I was ranked fifth, I think, going into that final. But because I won my heat, yeah, I won the middle lanes. I remember just having this whole strap top. I, I think I done a couple low hurdle drills, didn't do blocks, nothing. I was like, nah, like, this is this is going to be peak. One of the team members, I ain't going to say his name, come up to me, he's like, Kai, like, this is do or die, bro. Like, you're not a dickhead. Like, either you run. No, he didn't even give me an either. He literally said, you're running your ass off and you're coming off in a stretcher. And I looked at him like, that's some real shit, bro. Like, I've not trained this hard, made it to this final just to give... 40% and just no to guilt. save my leg. Bond yeah. that. Nah, man. <laughs> I went hard, bro. And my reaction was like 0. 0.0. Wait, 0. 0.100. It was on the thing. Like, I went for it. <laughs> like, the adrenaline, the pure adrenaline got me out. Mm. And I remember just getting to the fifth hurdle, running on adrenaline. Then I start feeling my leg. I was like, shit. Then the French guy passes me. I was like, Shit, let me just hold on for a second. I see the other French guy creeping up. Oh, it was great. It was a great time, man. Like, I, I sat there as well after, like, I didn't feel my leg. And that's the worst. I don't know if you guys had injuries. Yeah. And they're like, probably like after a competition or something that's gone by. Even if you haven't competed or not, 
Mm. And then for some reason, the whole injury just gone. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's probably in your head. I just sat there like, <laughs> I can run the game, you know. Because like, the more you right. think about it, the more you just start to play and play exactly. off and play off. Do you think it was nerves? Like from, because you've come second at senior champs. That's a bonus. But you, in your mind, you've still got that main goal of, of yours that you want. So it's like, as much as I've done this, and this is a great achievement, if I don't achieve my actual goal, I'm going to be upset. So yeah. do you think that was just triggering off something in your mind subliminally like, I think, you know what? I think it's been going to, I've been making teams from 2013 to 2017, I've made a team. Yeah. And every team I've made, I've never made it out the the, the heats, except for my first one, I made the semi-finals. I've never made it out of heats. And I always used to just kick myself in the head, like, Kai, you're really just aiming to just make a team and that's it, I enjoy it. and just go for like the Go show. for the holiday. Yeah. Do some box jumps. <laughs> See you, yeah. Stay away from me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think this was like my final year, like as an age group, I was like, I'm not going to get this chance again. Yeah. It's like do or die. So I think, I don't think it was nerves. I, I think I put a lot of pressure on myself, but I think the team around me I had, mm-hmm. like with you guys, um, with the, the medical team, like they're really like, I was like, oh, can't this ain't nothing, bro. Like you've been here before. Like this ain't nothing. So the nerves probably, there was a bit of nerves, but at the same time I was quite calm because everyone around me was calm. Yeah. yeah. Obviously after the race, the, the team coaches were like, Kyle, can't lie, yeah. Even the doctor, they're like, can't lie, we didn't even think he was gonna, we thought he was gonna pull you off on the stretcher. <laughs> like, the way I could not move my leg, they said they was worried for me, but their job was to. I think, I think you helped yourself though. Like, what you said um, just previously is that you didn't do the blocks. You didn't do like normal height hurdles for your warm up. And obviously, um, NSF's performance had given you some work to do like just to kind of supplement what you might not have been able to do. So all that stuff probably helped oh, yeah, to definitely. save your leg yeah, okay. for that one run. Because some people would just be like, yeah, I'm doing my warm up as normal. Yeah. And halfway down the track, like they can't clear the hurdle and then it's a massacre. Exactly. And then that, that affects you mentally. I was- Have you ever fallen? Yeah, falling once here at Lee Valley. <laughs> South <laughs> England. <laughs> On the track, yeah. In a race. Was you, was you going for it? Yeah, because I was spotting me as under 17. It was South okay. England in the heats. And it was the video somewhere. The video's on Facebook. Bro, it was like someone held down the B button on Xbox. You know, back in the day, <laughs> when you could quad dive. I yeah. dive, bro. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then there's a picture. One of them pricks of an athlete took a picture of him on Facebook. And you just see them hurting it and me diving like this. <laughs> but I said myself, I'll never fall in a game, bro. Fun that. Okay, so you've had this mystery injury yeah um medaled at europeans yeah off season <laughs> you've now got your goals for the following season what was your aims because you still have bucks in there as well so, yeah oh yeah crap so i went to university so i don't even want to go to university so why not well, it's a waste of time it still is a waste of time to me someone like me is a waste of time because i've got my qualifications in something else in a trade Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, university is just a bonus for me. Okay. I literally done it for my mum. My mum said I would. She don't want me to be a grease monkey, as they call it. I fix cars in it, okay. so she want me to be a grease monkey. She want me to have something else as well. Yeah. So I think me being a grease monkey is. I'm. I'm. I'm stop saying that. Sorry. <laughs> me being a mechanic or something to fall backward. Yeah. So, yeah, university was never in my plans at all. Who taught you how to to fix cars? My dad. My dad, bro. Yeah, my dad told me I had to fix cars when I was eight. So was your mom calling your dad a grease monkey <laughs> as well? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bro, every weekend, even now, like we'll go out and fix cars without fail. We've even fixed cars in the snow, bro. It was nuts. We've what made you pick that as your money. trade? Money. Money. <laughs> Can't lie. Does that fund your athletics? One million percent. All this, see, that's why another thing, I ain't worried about not being sponsored or nothing like that because Certain men are not even making a few bags a year, bro. Mm. And they want to be pretending they're bees knees. Do you think, sorry, sorry to cut you. um, Do you think not being sponsored helps you keep focus? Because you actually have to work. You are literally working for your money to fund something else, which will pay you money in the long run. Um, uh, Not really, just because, oh, I don't know actually. The thing is with my trade, it's very hands-on and it's very yeah. physically draining. So 
I've had to balance that since I was about 15, 16, where I've had to balance education, had to balance work and mm -hmm. training at the same time. I feel like if you just get some income directed to your account every month, you ain't got to worry about worrying where your next where job's next coming from, kind yeah. of thing. But for, fortunate enough, I'm actually good at my job. So I do have reoccurring jobs kind of thing. I get people, there's always going to be cars on the road, innit? Everyone yeah, always yeah. needs their car fix. Word of mouth, social media, especially nowadays. There's always someone like, oh, do you know a mechanic? Or someone just posts, oh, car broke down. Oh, I know someone, blah, blah, blah. Holler at him, blah, blah, blah. It's funny, I've known you for, I'm, I'm going to say at least six years, I've probably known you. And only in the last maybe uh, five, four or five years, I've really like gotten to know you properly. But I never see you really promote that side of your your life. So it's where you're saying like social media and stuff. Yeah. I see you as the athlete. I always like forget that yeah. you are a mechanic. So yeah. how do you? <laughs> I've only just started promoting it recently because um, I just, like I said, the course I do, it's made me realize, you know, social media is very important for a lot of, a lot of things. Like mm -hmm. people get a lot of money off social, social media. media. So yeah, I started YouTube promoting videos. it. YouTube channel, playing <laughs> yeah, Fortnite. Vlogs, yeah, exactly. Playing, playing so, Fortnite. And some of my friends are YouTubers as well. And I'm seeing the numbers they're doing and the money they're making. And I'm not saying I would do a YouTube bloody fixing cars and whatnot, but social media is where it's yeah. at. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Never but, know, man. Yeah, you know what? It's because I like, I really look up to my dad and he really, I don't know. He never used. Obviously, he don't use social media. He don't even like. He just bought the iPhone 11. He said it's a waste of money, bro. I know you. See, I see you got it there. Is it a waste? <laughs> I don't know. It's off, I, I don't even know. But yeah, that's what I mean. It's he faster. Use, that, that's all I know. It's, it's faster. faster. That's what that's he said it. as well. <laughs> but he and technology don't go. So it's just words of mouth. So I've always done it words of mouth. I've got them loyal customers that I've had Donnies cool. who've bought cars out of Mercedes, out of Ford, and all of that. They wouldn't yeah, even go back. It to get it done. Even if it's on warranty, they will come to me to fix it because they trust me. Mm, fair enough. It's like most people, like you don't, you can't really trust them, trust, especially like trade like plumbers, engineers, all, like, all them stuff, you can't really trust them. But luckily I've got that trust with these people. So I haven't had to rely on social media to fund or promote myself. So when I eventually get a car, a certified mechanic here. Yeah? I'm here, man. Discount. Huh? Dis <laughs> <laughs> I forget all the times you've 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 bullied me on on, on WhatsApp. I don't on group chats. I don't think that was me. There's I think one was... guy. There was one time, bro. There was one time. Yeah, it was my birthday. Everyone saying happy birthday, blah blah. And I'm looking like I'm, you know, like you like. Okay, there's certain people that should say it to me. The whole group chat said it. This guy ain't said it yet. So I'm like, okay, wait. He private messaged me, happy birthday, bro. I was like, raw thanks, man. He's like, yeah, but you're still fat though. I was like. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to get you too over here. I was like, you know what? I love that. That's what I need, bro. <laughs> no, but you know what? It was love, though. It was love, of course. That, that's just me. That's how I am. Yeah, you're cool. I, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe I am. Video doesn't show that, though. Oh, of course Nice not. guy, Dean Ritz. <laughs> Where's the peanut butter? You know that <laughs> it's always um, the best interest that we have for you. Whether it's oh, me. Oh, uh, mom, dad, I mean, you've so you've spoken to us about how like much they are behind you with this, which mm. I think is great because some people don't have that support. Uh, there's, there's parents that don't even come watch them like, compete. That's, lie, that I'm, blows my mind. I'm not going to lie. When I did do track and field, my mom would often say, like, oh, do you want me to come? No. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> That's no, crazy to me, well. no. You know why? Because I don't, I don't do embarrassment. So for uh. me... If I run, I was like, I was, I was decent. I was alright, but yeah, like I would have to do the whole. Oh, you know, you did a hundred for a point. I did oh, okay. For a point. See, I and, used to have that mentality, but with girls. When and, girls and, used to come to ask me to watch race, I'm like, only the Essex count. The ones I know that I'm certainly gonna run because you're gonna be running against that. Like, yeah, but ain't no one men. trying to come and watch me do <laughs> long jump. Like I, I You'd could be surprised. Under you know? seventeen, I was cool with that for Essex. So yeah, mum, you can come and watch that. Yeah. As soon as it got to like South of England, oh, something England a bit more champs, serious. Yeah. Nah. Nah. You know what? There's no Stay point. Home. There's no point. Yeah, Stay home. Nah. Oh, I'm, I'm not do well anyway. We're going What's Sheffield. Vinco, I may it? not get in the top <laughs> six, eight. Yeah, six or eight. It's a long journey for for you to see, to what I mean? not see yeah. me go through. So nah. I hear but, that. But my parents have seen me lose, lose, like run around the bloody hurdles <laughs> to winning, winning big championships. So did they go to um, 
Under twenty threes. Have they been to any of your major over, uh, so, overseas competitions? So twenty fourteen, World Junior Championships in Oregon. Sick. I like that year was a shambles year, but I remember running that race. Bear upset because, like I said, they get out the heat, and I just see my dad walking out of nowhere, and I just start busting out crying, bro. I was like, he was like, "Fix up, man. We doing." I was like, you've come all the way here to watch me. They're like, yeah, but we also went Vegas as well because he's like two hours away. <laughs> so they came to watch me. Well, he tried to hide it, but they came to watch me, innit? Mm -hmm. And then after they went to Vegas, lived their life, whatnot. <laughs> but yeah, they've come there. They've literally asked like, oh, do you want to come here? But like the same way you are with counties and all that, I was with like these international cars. I was like, mm -hmm. brother, I'm just going there for a day, compete, run the time. I'm not going there. Not, because what I've realized, Shout out to Antonio Infantino for telling me this year. Every race or every season, you're not going to PB. So don't be running to PB. Sometimes you just got to do enough to win. Because mm -hmm. you're going to get to that stage where you're going to be running for funds, running for money. So as long as you just run the time you need to to, run, to win, then get back on the plane, refresh, go back and go do another international. Mm. So that's how I thought about it. So I was like, my parents, because they're really like, oh, what time are you? They're very like time and position. Yeah. So I was like, well, if you're gonna feel like that, don't come because there's no point. I know you want to support me, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, I'm there just to make my money and come back home. No, mm -hmm. that's what that's a lot of the things we had in um, box. Because people that didn't, because I did American football, and a lot of my mate that we did American football with didn't understand why I used to go to Sheffield for the weekend. Yeah. And I used to just go, I just compete. And they go, oh, so three of my boys came to watch. <laughs> I stayed in my hotel room, like you're on the floor and shit. Uh, <laughs> them ones. Oh, shit. That's yeah. the best year. <laughs> them ones. <laughs> they're on the floor, like it was great. So, <laughs> and then he went. So we, we started watching the races together. And obviously, the 60s is on the Friday, so that's first. Mm. So I go to the semis, I pulled out, Armstring gone. And then my boy, my boy went, Why is this? So obviously, you've got some athletes that are up there in box and you've got others that are just filling lanes. units that are just yeah. filling in spaces in there yeah all uh, right you know Ooh. people put their efforts in if you, if you work you can go there if you feel comfortable being in that That's position it, yeah. it's fine isn't it and my boy went so why, why would i come all the way here when i know i'm not gonna win and Still that hit me because <laughs> that, you, you, you think you're working so hard but they don't understand the fact of yeah you're aiming for other pbs or you're aiming to get Setting things from it, yeah. Because everyone sort of thinks if you're not first, second, third, it's pointless. No, what million well, percent? If you run the PB, it's not been pointless. That's why I don't really like my friends coming as well because they're more about position. They're trying to show yeah. the Snapchat. Yeah, but boy, say, won. Man, boy does one. That's, <laughs> That's it. I keep saying I rather come last in a good race with a PB, bro, than to win it in some dead time. Facts. I mean, obviously, if it's on the international stage, it's for peas. It's yeah. Different, but <laughs> it was like it's common county champs. Same, everyone just turned out to Loughborough International. Yeah. And like, I'm talking the big dogs. And I think he come fourth or something, but I run like a 34. I'm laughing, bro. I don't mind that. So I hear what you're saying, like, friends and all that. Because so obviously, like, it. football, everything else, we all know who the top dogs are. You know, the top four. Yeah. And it goes that way. Everyone understands where they need to be. But in athletics, it's not like that. Sometimes this year, you can be at the bottom the next year you can that's you can it, push yeah. all the way to the top because well, a, a year is a long time for an athlete to make a lot of changes a yeah. year is a long time for you to mentally fix up i think a lot of people actually let themselves down in competitions just mentally before you get on the track you're like oh shit, she's here <laughs> uh, real, you know yeah. you've, you've already fucked up mm. but if you can adjust to that yeah in a year your competition from going from going four place can go to first. That was exactly like, like yeah, literally just like that. And people need to understand that you need to be there to be able to help. Like you said, he's been helping you in the group chat for that competition in Europe. If you didn't have that, if you was just like, oh, if you aren't gonna win this, you know, what's the point? Why yeah. the point? You might have reacted differently. And I think uh, that's so a, that's that, a change. That. I think that's a change I had to make this year because I had a lot of people around me that couldn't see my vision couldn't see why I'm doing it. And I had to just plainly cut them loose. Yeah, I've had, I've had people, I, I, coaches that I used to work with that was like, oh, what's the point? Why, why are you doing this thing, Kai, if you're not yeah. gonna, if they ain't the goal? And I was like, well, 
that's not my goal. Like, that's someone else's goal. That's not my goal. Well, if you're going to think like that, don't work with me. Yeah. Don't. You know what I mean? Have you ever had um, coaches? So this is one thing that, because I coach currently and I hate giving unrealistic times. Like, yeah. that's, I think that's one of the things like a lot of coaches do where the, September, oh yeah, this is the time you're going for. That is <laughs> When nuts. we both know <laughs> there's certain I'm coaches, not running yeah, that time. <laughs> that will tell you, there's certain coaches that will tell you you're going to run this time and they've never seen you in your life. But... <laughs> That's each of that. They see right. you do two, two, two high knees. <laughs> That's it. Two, two lunges. Yeah, man, promising you times, you know. Man's promising you times for. Hey, like, I had, I had this money. guy come. Mm. I, I was training one day. I had this guy come. He just, I, th- I think he just came into the track, just saw me running, and he went. Oh, I, if I, you wait, work I, with me, yeah. If you work with me, I can, I can help you with this. I can help you with that. It was talking about gym stuff. Yeah. And he didn't know what it was. He was like, I can help you quicker than that. Yeah, I was like, good. fair enough. So what have you got for me? And it's just generic PT and stuff. So he didn't know. <laughs> I knew what I was doing and I knew what I was talking about. Yeah. So, he, I, okay, explain to me what you would do for me then. If you believe I should pay you this money for you to work with me. And he, he just came out with his squats. I was like, yeah, everyone freaking does squats. <laughs> deadlifts. Everyone does deadlifts. You know, the typical things just came across. And, it was like, and I was like, so where does this relate to my sprinting like apart from squats yeah we all know for me to be chris power mm. it's basic stuff i don't need to pay you for that and he just froze <laughs> he just froze and it was just like and i think that's why my ssc coach now i could work better with because he's a athlete himself shout out yusuf yeah because that guy can't lie within like a month or a bit with working with him I went down from 104 kg to 94 kg. Like we stopped doing the heavy weights. We stopped doing unnecessary stuff. And we started thinking more specific for what you're doing. What sport. I'm doing. Mate, exactly. I'm told, uh, Yusuf, get like, rid of this belly. <laughs> Listen, the guy's the truth, you know, I'm telling you. A lot of people go to him now because he knows his stuff, man. I respect it. Because is that thing, because there's a lot of people, obviously, you go to pay your coaching bodies, whatever, and you also want to earn money from it. But sometimes you have to know your levels because I think for athletes, there is levels of coaching to it. Mm. And if you believe you're not good enough to coach someone at a higher level, why try and convince them to come to you? Where Just because you want to use their name. See all that poaching shit, yeah? Coaches <laughs> need to come off that. <laughs> I've had a coach recently telling me that I'm overweight, I don't trade it off. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, I ain't even been here. How are you telling me I don't trade it off? I've been trading somewhere else, big man. Next time, next time, thinking, next race, I ride a season's best. I look at him. Nah, he's still not doing it off. Blah, blah, come trade with me in the winter. <laughs> Suck your mother, bro. Come with me, come, with me. come on 10 huh? times around the Two. track. A very well-known coach. What yeah, event? You know him what very event? well. What event? You know very well. What event? You know very well. <laughs> that that poaching stuff pissed me off. How you how you, how do you start poaching someone by costing them, turn them they're whack, and then say they can do better than me. But you just said I'm whack. So why would you want me in your group? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> why would you want me in your group? Either you're money motivated or you're just lying straight to my face. Yeah, there's a lot of athletes like you like young athletes like for for us down. Oh, um, I was gonna say down north then. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> for us in the north, it's quite. There's certain clubs that you know are the big dogs around the place. Every other club is sort of like a feeder club for some of them because of the league, they're in the British leagues and all those other things. And you've got coaches that some GB coach coaches in there because you've got good athletes. Yeah. Because the athletes are good. <laughs> okay. So there's a difference between athletes being talented and a coach doing the work. Because I've I've seen recently people are trying to take results that's how to take well say they did something for an athlete when naturally that athlete had just done that without actually being coached yeah some people just are just, just good at it yeah. like if you, imagine you coming your first year your first year you win england champs did i coach you for that or did then that's the thing as well naturally, a lot of did you naturally do that no it's true and then you end up promoting yourself as i had an international athlete i had this but did you have that? Yeah, or you start did... from the ground up. That's why, that's why, I don't know why people don't, nah, I ain't gonna get into that, but there's a lot of coaches that do build athletes up from the start. And then these other high pro 
coach is just calm and just sweet, but you ain't done nothing with them. There's a lot of people have been injured. There's a lot of people have been injured through it because you get from 2011, 2012, that's been happening. Yeah. There's a lot of coaches who have had athletes, lost lost athletes (coughs) to other coaches, and then the athlete tries to go back to this coach and they go to this coach and they go to that coach. Drag to ATMs in that, but yeah. And the difference between like, do you pay for your, do you pay your coach? Yeah. My, Sorry, coach, my coach does it for the <laughs> my coach does it for the love man so there's a, there's now just things about if obviously you pay your coach there's expectations they are better that's what people believe now that if, I've, oh, if I'm paying you to coach me you're probably better than that guy that's doing it for free and people See are forgetting that, yeah. yeah people oh. are forgetting that some people just do it because they actually love the sport like you just said he loves the sport he loves the sport yeah that's why he's doing it and they don't understand I can easily go and get paid. Let's go to football. Go and coach some, yeah. <laughs> go and coach some footballers, man. It's easy but, to do but that. It's that as well, it's not because they're good. It's because this is their full time. That's probably their full time job is coaching. Some of them, yeah. Like, so I'm saying, my coach is retired. My coach lives around the corner from the track. He's been in this club for 50 years, man. Huh? 50? 50. 5-0. 5-0. He's turned, he turned 70 on Tuesday. Fam, our combined age is not 50. <laughs> See what I mean? Mm, no, exactly. it's not. No, no, it's not. See what I mean? That's a long time. That's a, that's a long time commitment, man. And he's been in that it. period, he would have had athletes leave, come back. See what I mean? If I leave, those... he ain't gonna feel no way. He's not gonna quit the track because he's still got his his club athletes that he trains. Yeah. I only come to this club because I saw this club on television. Remember McCain Track and Field Show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched that every Sunday, and I see Enfield and Harry Kane wilding, bro. I was like, I'll be really part of that emailed the club he was the first one to reply he's like yeah I'll, I'll see you tuesday he's the only coach that's never commented on my weight only coach that has believed in me from the start never said nothing negative to me in my life bro he always keep his personal life to to business and that's why i stick with him if i wanted to i could have left i could be paying five bills a month to so some any coach i could be doing this or that but no nah, man you gotta stick to People probably say, oh, it's probably it's time for you to move on. I don't think so, because the time I move on to another coach, he's got all these high product profile athletes. Mm-hmm. I'm no longer but, priority. I'm yeah. in the back. I'm just helping them progress. And then I'm just in the back. Paying. And that's, that's the thing people forget, that sometimes a coach can bring you in to help another person rather than you believe. It's and a lot of to, athletes do not know yeah, that. And it's so think, sad. Yeah, he's brought me in, yeah, to develop me, but does it bring to develop you or to develop someone else you know I mean? to go to the next level and, and <laughs> most time i'm going to say that the program that you get is for that main athlete yeah and if it works for you it does well done if, if it doesn't, don't sorry it's so it <laughs> so it goes it's rough just take it I mean, <laughs> it, it's a difficult spot because like, like i said a year can change a lot if you end up doing that and being like someone else's um Doma, in it. <laughs> Putting someone else's st- uh, step up, and the next year, you see yourself in your worst position that you were before. But now you've lost two. Who's grand. to blame? Who's to but blame? Now, but now you've lost two grand. Yeah, <laughs> you get so, that back. <laughs> yeah, like, that's gone. You paid to be someone's. Um, <laughs> what's he called when you help them go around the track? Pacer. <laughs> yeah, you paid two bags to be someone's pacemaker. Oh my gosh! I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll lose it. What? I mean, this track game is not like, nice. You know, don't get us wrong. By the way, people can get coached and get paid because I get paid. <laughs> you can get paid because obviously sometimes you put people put a lot of work into athletes, but you have to sometimes you have to do for the right reasons. Okay, and let me ask you a question. Yeah. Sorry, let me ask you a question. So, you charge here? Yeah? Do you do your athletes expect? like results then from you or they, they just kind of like go with the flow because when money's involved you kind of expect a service and that service usually tends to be very good well and in our case pbs well like for me i believe whatever you put in to my training session you will get the results for if you come into my training session every like a long year if you come into my training session every day walk in it and then at the end of the year you don't improve yeah you cannot blame me for that I hear that. Because all through that year, I would have been telling you, this is not enough, this is not enough. But then if you end up not performing, that's your fault. And that's why I always have, I have a yearly review. 
where we sit down in a room for like two hours and we just talk. And if I had a bad year with an athlete, like recently I had a really bad, well, they PB'd, but they didn't medal. Well, that's not that's <laughs> not their that's not your fault. Yeah, because they've and done better than they did before. Everyone just happened to step up the game as well. But people don't people. When you're doing good, people sit as the athletes doing good. Yeah. When you do bad, a lot of people will blame us on the coach. coach. No, we'll believe and which is why athletes leave. And that's why I started charging people because I realized if you had a bad year and I've invested a whole year of doing you very well, and then you then didn't. PB in one year because maybe <coughs> the wind has just not helped properly yeah. or something, and then you try and blame me for that and move on to the oh, next. My man. mother nature, bro. Like, it's true. I put so much work into that. That's why yeah. I, I believe coaches should get paid because that's they, why I respect coaches a lot because they don't have to do this for they, us. They ex- don't exactly. They don't like a lot. There's of a lot people, of athletes that are self-coached. I mean, they, not, yeah. I think some athletes. Emmanuel believe Stevens. When you pay for the club, he was self-coached for a while. <laughs> yeah, Antonio. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Antonio doesn't lot people self coach. Like, there's a lot of people that are just people below that top tier six. athletes yeah. that don't get coached or get coached by their parents. And, you know, and those it, Donnies are the one. You think I ever let my dad tell me? My dad just tells me run faster. Come <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but your dad's a Trini. So it will be eat hard food and run fast. <laughs> so. Well, I don't even eat hard food, bro, but no, I'm a fussy eater, man. I'm a but, fussy um, eater. No, like. The, the track game is mad. Like, is it? Is it? Because that's why I would like us to get a coach in as well. Because I'm I think gonna, it would be interesting to see. Track game is mad the, in the university their side anywhere. of this of this story. Because it would be interesting to see what they believe. Especially like the top coaches. Because they would have lost a few people in a year. Imagine how many co- how many athletes they lose and how many athletes they get in. Like, shout out Coach Kenneth. Like, I love what he's doing with his long jumpers and his triple jumpers. And he's getting like people from different countries like talking to him but that's for instagram like he's using he's now using social media like you said go. before to make a name for himself and i didn't know about him until i found his instagram like john blackie then, has had enough athletes come through the ranks junior champs european champs world champs okay i want to say sorry Sub could that 10 free people i want to say sorry could that yeah because that guy Obviously, he knows his stuff, isn't it? And Very much so. Oh, he could t- yeah, obviously, he could tell. I'm trying to word this without... The thing is, we know who he coaches. Yeah. You can't go there expecting to instantly, in a year, be on that level. Of course not. There's been so much time, effort that's gone into that. So you can't expect a guy, especially him, his, his age... No, not age is not even into it, but you can't expect to be on that level straight away. There's people that's been there, and I think it's, I think it's jealousy. I think people expect to go there. They see they're not getting the limelight, or their pace, ma- they probably think they're pace making. <laughs> These times, that person is way out ahead. If anything, they're pace making for you, mm. but you're still not happy. I don't get it because there's people that have good seasons with coaches and still leave. It's like yeah. the thing with them, um, both old coach. What happened with Blake and yeah. all of them, man? Like. That came out of nowhere. I didn't. I didn't expect that to happen. I don't even know what happened. I'm so not into <laughs> track to this track scene, bro. It's bad. Nah, we won't go into that because that, that's that's a long that's a long talk. But obviously, both came out and defended his his coach because he said he brought you to this level and you've not run faster than that. Yeah, that's a See, you after problem. like you left and you've not run faster. Yeah, what is that after, true? That, that's that's your problem, isn't it? Exactly. Like, that's not his problem. No matter what you want to put it. Yeah, but it happens. Like it's it's sports that's that's sports in general yeah like you can have that one great year and then your body's maxed out look how many juniors have had let's go um, let's go through english school untold (laughs) exactly amounts of success as a junior and then they can't produce that it's your your body's done Mm. like i mean it's not even that you think it's the the environments around them when they get older Look, look, you, there's a trend when they start going to university because once you start living in, in dorms, start Did going to freshers. <laughs> no. Never lived in dorms? Never. Oh. I went to university, not late, but I done my three years in mechanics. Then I started UBO at, what, 2017? So I think, no, nah, I just I didn't have time. I live like 15 minutes away. What happened between you and um, UEO this year? So 2019, it's been a bit of a up and down season for you. Mm. Um, started off great indoors 
from what I remember, it was great. Had um, one of your fastest times for a couple of years. Uh, over the hurdles. Well, it's not like you do anything else, but yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you were trying to get to university games. Yeah, man. But for some reason, you all were trying to put a block on that. We're trying to have it, bro. Yeah. So. Why? You're representing them. And it's trying to better yourself as an athlete. You've done so much for them. You're on their scholarship program or mm -hmm. was on their scholarship I program. Was, yeah. So what was the situation? So the situation all stemmed from good old social media. So, well, that's what just, that was like the final straw. But I think, yeah, so it started off when, when I got my contract, mm -hmm. read through my contract, and they said they're going to pay 50% for any international comp um, competitions. Okay. They even put example World University Games. So, like I said, me and my coach sat down. We was like, okay, that's the aim. The aim is World University Games. The standard is thirteen eighty, achievable. Mm -hmm. So, done whatever I had to do within my contract to get my money, whatever. Yeah. And yeah, I can't turn around now. I was like, okay, so are you gonna pay like half towards it? They was like, we got no money. I was like. But it says in my contracts that you're gonna pay. It was like, yeah, well, we ain't got the money. I was like, all right, cool. Funded it myself, got the peas myself, paid seventeen hundred and fifty pounds to go. When the team come out now, they're like, Oh, well done to UBL Sports Collar, car running the board for going. Uh the work that he's done here, obviously, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, wait a minute, this this can't run. <laughs> I at first bit my tongue, I was like, I ain't gonna say no. But there's a lot of influences around me in our group chat. Yeah. At UEO, there's people at UEO, I ain't gonna say names, that was like, Kai, this ain't right, bro. Like, stand your ground. And I was like, you know what, you're right. So I just left a nice little comment, and I was like, thanks guys. I appreciate the the shout out, but you did help me in this occasion. I had to fund this myself. I've done a lot for this university, but obviously I still can't even get half of 1750. Mm. <laughs> this, I didn't expect it to blow how it did. Yeah. Because at the same time, I did know that other universities and athletes were going through this as well, where they didn't get no support. So yeah. they had to do GoFundMe and all of that stuff to get the money. Yeah. I was fortunate to get the money. I got the money. So when I said that, I thought nothing of it. I was on the phone to one of my friends. Yeah. Then I see a call from the head of sports scholarships. And I was like... Now you want to holler at me? You've been telling me no all these times. I've emailed you. I've emailed the head of who, who is in charge of you. And all you guys said you got no money. So I was like, cool, I'll leave it. So now that I posted this, the truth, which you told me in the email, it's a problem. So I aired that call. Aired the second call. Then he left me a voice note. I heard it. He was like, yeah, we're going to leave. We're going to seize your money, your last bit of money that you're getting from your scholarship until you come in and talk to us. So I was like, all right, well, whatever. Come in the next day basically said that I breached your contract, whatever. I was like, look, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm sorry for what I've done, but I still mean it. In How a way. can you breach what they breached? That sure, doesn't make sense. broken first, isn't it? Lawyers, lawyers have reached out to me. BBC has reached out to me. This is the first time I'm talking about it. BBC Only Sport? Yeah. BBC Sport has reached out uh, to me. BBC Sport Athletics. BBC <laughs> Sports. Okay. Not Athletics, BBC okay. Sports. Okay, yeah. okay. So I have kept my mouth quiet about it, but they men are cunts. Facts. I'm being so real. Their man extorts athletes and it's so bad. You can't promise an athlete something and then not deliver. If yeah. we're holding up our ends of the bargain, you should too. Sure. At the least, pay us on time. Pay our money on time. Don't be be like, oh, uh, um, uh, um, and an Ari. Like, pay us. You're, you're good for it. So, it was all confusing. It was confusing how I done everything I had to do that year. I went box, both box. I didn't have to do that. Yeah. Because certain athletes on the scholarship did not compete yeah. and they still got their money. I done all 10 hours of my scholars. I went out of my way to schools, I went to events, whatever, representing UBO to get my scholar hours. I went to some, the shitty sports awards, bro. <laughs> so dead. You might need to fix up with that, bro. Where is this? At the O2, into the O2. Wasn't this what you tried to, what you hollered at me for with the whole ACS thing at one point? Oh, that was another whack team, bro. See that? <laughs> that's another mess, bro. That whole uni just a mess, bro. But 
It's run, it's run by young people, so I, I expect errors, in it. Yeah. But not errors like this, man. So, the worst thing is, out of all of this, they try to find me a thousand pounds for the comment I made on Instagram. I was like, where the blood clot <laughs> you get a thousand pounds from? They're like, we just think it's suitable. I was like, well, I think it's suitable. I leave then. They're like, <laughs> what we could do, we could find you a thousand pounds and then next year, add it onto your scholarship next year. I was like, what is the point? I need the money now to pay for World University Games. They're going to fine you a thousand pounds. Yeah. And then pay you back thousand pounds. Yeah. Thousand next year. <laughs> but they couldn't pay you what? Yeah. You, okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Just because because that makes sense isn't it yeah so i was like this place is done out here so i was like well if you're going to be so done out here i'm going to remove myself from the scholarship so i'm not paying a thousand pounds i was like you sure you want this so i was like listen i do so i did get kicked off i chose to leave them ones but they were so, so it's the way they done the it because they was like oh they went straight to snc to the SSC place, they went straight to all the masseuse, all of that. It was like, yeah, Kai's not in the program. He's done. Like, before I even walked to the car park, I had Donnie's who works. Was like, what? You got kicked out? I was like, what? what? <laughs> that man already had the email ready set. <laughs> so I was like, cool, whatever. So I ain't said nothing since. I ain't said nothing. People been telling me to hold back, but it needs to be said. You, there's been people that's gone to UEL off of what I've said, good stuff I've I said. And now they're getting treated how I'm getting treated. Yeah. You're telling them, oh, we promise you this. And now you're, they're only getting minimal. Because you've, you've got a choice of going to a different uni. You might have chosen a different uni and got better funding or get well, better scholarship and stuff. But if they're promising you stuff and they're not giving it to you and then <laughs> wanting to find you as well, like things like that, you don't want, you wouldn't want to be in the mix with them anymore. No, not like, true. After, after that, I don't see you ever like, you know, making it work with that uni, especially after the call, after banding you from everywhere. Exactly. You've and worked then, with those people for that long as well. Yeah. They, all, they will all know you. Yeah, 100%. And but, I was at a point where I was like, they convinced me to go university as well. They was like, we'll offer you this, we'll offer you this. So I was like, oh, hell yeah, I'm going there. Funny. But then when you don't offer me this stuff, then I'm just like, now I'm just like everyone else. <laughs> so if you take the scholarship away from me, I'm just another I'm student. Just another student. Yeah. What the hell am I doing here? <laughs> so I was like, no, I'm, I'm moving. So I moved to Greenwich. This is before I even knew that a sports scholarship because I was so in the moment, I was so heated that I just, just went on UCAS, <laughs> closest of a university that does my course, which is direct entry, Greenwich. I was like, calm. So I do some more research after I, I got applied. I was like, oh, they do sports scholarships. Ended up applying for it. Yeah. Two twos, few fast forward, like a couple of months, got emails saying, yeah, um, because of your sporting um, achievements, we want to uh, give you the highest scholarship we have. How's that? God works in <laughs> mysterious ways, man, but we thank God. So, yeah, man, this is where we are now. So, so 2019, bit of a bum year, but 2020 Olympics. Yeah. Is that the, is that the aim? Is that the him? That's always the, <laughs> that's always the aim, man. That's always the, I can't, I'm not gonna, act cool be like uh well you know it's a hey, man i ain't doing this i ain't in this game for i have achieved in my head anything i need to achieve in this game if i go olympics i'll happily retire retire i'll quit because <laughs> retire at 23 <laughs> yeah because i'm not i'm not trying to be with these old athletes trying to work part-time in a retail job and try and still make this work bro. i'm trying to you're start gonna my that career. comment when nsx performance sees that but we'll deal with that later um listen i'm speaking the truth man I personally mean, i think you've got a lot to give um so i can't see you retiring if you make the olympics next year so if i make the olympics yes i'm not going to retire but of course. i mean if i don't then i don't see why i should be in this sport no more because they're not showing love to to the athletes they're not showing love they're only showing the ones which i understand to the top guys but mm -hmm. What were the other guys coming through? They, the top guys were the bottom guys at some point. At one point, yeah. yeah. So I'm not there to fill lanes no more, innit? Yeah. I'm like, I've seen my age mates starting to get mortgages and like do stuff, innit? So I'm not trying to still try to hang on to this athletics career, get a little, little um, showtime on BBC, Red Button for British trials <laughs> for, and spend hella time 
tra tra like driving an hour to trade in here just for that. Piss off. <laughs> Piss off. <laughs> I've had, since I've been injured this year, I ain't talking money, but I've had, I've really promoted my business and fixing cars and I've had a whale of a time. I've had a good summer because I've had not to focus about athletics. I hadn't had to spend money on petrol getting to trade in. I haven't had to spend on membership here. Like I've been literally saving, working and enjoying my weekends like yeah. any other person at my age mates. And I've enjoyed it. I'm not saying that's what I want to do all the time because of course I missed athletics. No. Yeah. Because I was, like even till today, I like I've been waking up. Uh, okay, not today, but I've been waking <laughs> up early <laughs> to because that's what I'm used to for trading. Yeah. So, but I'm just thinking, I'm just getting that point where I've seen people older than me still try to do it. And I'm not trying to be one of them people, man. Like, it's, so what it's What would you say is the cutoff point? Like where, where do you say enough is enough ever enough? Yeah. Or do you think that there is a cutoff point where you just say, you know what? Like, <laughs> do you have to intrinsically just say, you know what? Turn it down. That's my yeah. body done. I think that's the most I can get out of my body. Cause I, I feel I like, just, well, I, th I think I feel, like, <laughs> I know what I you feel like there's a couple of people that went world <laughs> that champs this year and you know your, your time is done no what million percent your time is done I'm trying to work out why your, your season people. wasn't even amazing no, to definitely. warrant going so you've been picked on the back of previous uh, champs and previous champs go. but experience if it? that's if that particular year is not your year you ain't going no what million percent but then we then everyone's gonna be saying, "Oh, look at Kim Collins. He's gone since all forty. That guy's another guy, man. That ain't you, bro." <laughs> yeah, but Kim Collins is. You're eating fresh. You're eating <laughs> fresh fruit, fruit from Tesco, bro. Relax. He he is what you would call an enigma. Definitely. Like, I mean, nine 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 at forty, whatever is, just yeah. inhumane. Of course, they hate to see it. They hate to see it. Like, but. I, I don't think I'm gonna be running gonna some do it in it. Gaffney's yeah. gonna do the same in it. Nah, I, can't <laughs> I, that. Got, I don't I think. Yeah, going. but I, not everyone's like that. And I'm realistically thinking I'm not gonna be like that. So I'm not wasting my time in this track too. I love track and field. Me, I would love to come back out and train like I did in my teens. Yeah. yeah. But at 28, going 29. Do I have that commitment? Do I have See the what time? I mean? See what I mean? To go and do when that you get stuff exposed again? to different stuff in life, yeah. Parties. <laughs> not even parties Holidays. man just like Women. different lives this is the first time I've enjoyed my summer I have not like because obviously season goes through August yeah. yeah I've been out July like I've been out and I've seen sun <laughs> that is nuts so it's not even about being at party life or whatever but there's that balance and this year has made me open my eyes like I was I was falling out of love with the sport I can't lie mm -hmm. I've been committing myself too much to the sport made a lot of changes and I needed this to help me realize, all right, Kai, you've had this, you've had your fun. Now get back in this year, 2020, it's the last year. I mean, it's a 20th Olympic year. Let's go hard, innit? Mm. If it don't work, it don't work. If it works, thank God it works. But mm -hmm. I know I can't be doing this for a very long time because not because my body won't let me, but I know mentally. Mentally, that's not what you want. Yeah. I'm just, I don't and know how people you, do it. With you, and you already find, you already find love in fixing cars like you said like you're yeah. already having a nice business going so if you have that might just be you know what i don't know being in the rain every every winter trip. See, <laughs> every that, might, that might know. be why because you you have a passion for something that from if i'm remembering correctly that started at the age of eight like your dad had exactly. you out there just working 100%. so from 15 to now and you've been doing that it's something you generally enjoy which I think a lot of the time that's probably what some people don't have. Mm. They've not had something that they can say, yeah, I definitely enjoyed it and I'm going to commit to doing that. And it's be interesting to see all these athletes that's gone worlds or are up there in the rankings, what they're going to do after athletics. Because mm -hmm. a lot of them do drop out of uni. A lot of them do stuff like what? You're going to become coaches? Are you, going to yeah. pay, are you all going to be paid 500, charging 500 pound a month to coach? Like, I don't know. Like, you're going to be working in schools? I'm no, confused. BBC. BBC give out jobs to ex-athletes. Come on now. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> and then you get called shit by Seb Coe. It's mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's... The game's that's the a, game, innit? The, the game is the game. That's the track and field life. It's never an easy, it's never an easy run. No, it's but not. I mean, like you said, it's 2020 next year. 
Yeah, man. That is a go. I put a hundred and ten percent into that, man. I'm not there to fill lanes. I'm not a dickhead. So have you already kind of started your prep injury that was kind of keeping you at bay? The injury, this year. I've had it checked out uh, the other day. I've got the. I ain't got a green light because I don't get when people say I've got it all clear. Like, how you got it all clear? Go run and see if, it's, if it still hurts. It's the MOT, in it? I'll, I'll, I'll find out next week. I'll find out next it's week. It's the test drive. That's it, man. Sorry, man. Fake MOT is still. Sorry, anyway. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, how are you going to know? Because I'm going to go track. I'm going to go on the track. Yeah, you're going to see me run on the track. Okay, but are you going to go over 110 hurdles? Not yet. But I would do that at the start of a of a session of a. Of course, anyway. so how are you really gonna know? Because the event that is gonna affect you in the most. Oh no, what be believe you said? What believe you said? But so you might I will get know. there when I get there. You might not know until like November. That's right with me. That's my birthday month. That's calm. Got <laughs> do, lost you have, then. <laughs> do you have anybody that kind of keeps you going in track and field? Do you pay attention to what's going on around you, or do you just like you what like? You know, some people have athletes that they, they pay attention to and it keeps <laughs> them going. Um, <laughs> They're <better> dickheads. <laughs> I'm just, like, Why am I caring about next <laughs> man? Good for you if you've done that, yeah? <laughs> That's not me. You don't pay my bills, bro. I pay my bills. So why do I care what you're doing? And I'm here. There's studies. Oh, what time you run? What time? Are, we, are we 14? Don't be asking me what time I ran at a competition. Focus on your own lane, big man. From you knowing what time I ran, it's just gonna make you in a shitter mood, make you feel down. Like damn, like you end up going for a run, probably break your ankle or so. So if you run, so if someone says to you what time did you run, you say it'll be on power ten in a few days. Oh, uh, I tell him what time. No, no, I ain't gonna be a dickhead. I tell him what time <laughs> I run. But I'm just thinking, what's the point? Like, you sh I don't get why people care what other people run. You're not in my training group. We don't have the it's same coach. It's probably a crutch. Keeps them going. Keeps so them going. I got no one that keeps so me keep going. I mean, I'm going to bet and say that Usain Bolt is what kept getting Tyson up out of bed. <laughs> and Bills. Shout out Tyson. Oh, yeah, Bills. But <laughs> I reckon it was more because there was that one person he couldn't beat. Yeah. And he, that's what kept him getting up out of bed every morning Remember and eat chicken at six in the evening every single night. And if he's going to have McDonald's and ice cream on the weekend, it was that person. Yeah. You know I, I ain't mean? got no one. I ain't got no one. I, there's only one guy I've not beat in Great Britain, and that's Posy. Mm -hmm. I know my time's gonna come. I ain't, these men, there's so certain men that, that so rush it, it. So that keeps you going. I don't keep me going. No, I don't keep me going. No? No. <laughs> you don't wanna have that, I, I beat him. I beat him. What's that got to do in my life? I can't put it on my CV. I mean, <laughs> if we want to roll back the footage a little bit, we'll, we'll, we went to under 17 days and you took part. That was back in the day. That was <laughs> young me, bro. I part. was freaking texturizing my hair, you, putting fake earrings in back then. You took part in an octathlon, yeah, just to beat a man in the one ten hurdles. <laughs> you couldn't <laughs> and left <laughs> and left <laughs> and left after the game's like... a game, innit? What can I say? <laughs> that was the old me, but now, nah, these men don't pay my bills. If there's gonna always be their favorites, mm -hmm. British athletes always gonna have their favorites. So why should I worry about what they're doing when they're uh, not helping me? I have a question for you, and I've always asked you this question, but I'm gonna ask you on video. If GB are giving you this much like non-support. Uh huh. You have the option to go and run for another country. Mm -hmm. Why don't you try it out? What, what what benefits do you get for running for GB that you wouldn't get for running for the uh, you know the what? red and the, the black and the white? I just plain simple. I can't be bothered. I can't. I don't see myself in this game for that long mm -hmm. for me to make that change. Okay. I feel like that. Someone playing with cars. Someone, 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 someone's playing with cars. Someone's waving. Someone's waving. Someone's waving. Someone's waving. Oh my God, look at that guy, bro. He's, oh been out, he's been out here. I swear. swear. <laughs> and, <laughs> like that, bro. At, at any point, if you in this video, when you see me looking like this way, because yeah, yeah, this man's been there posing, and I'm sitting here like, I am cold as hell, and this man is out here with no top. Like, and he's and he's just calm. Man got chocolate spreads for him. <laughs> but so yeah, you're going back to your question. Yeah, I I just it's not that I can't be bothered. I, I take that back. It's not that I can't be bothered. But I feel like if I'm going to run a time, either way, I got to run a time. Yeah. If I want to run 33 in GB, it's gonna be something. If I'm going to run 33 in Trinidad for Trinidad, it's gonna be something. Yeah. So I don't want to change, move that process, and then I don't care what people think about. Oh, you just want to get an easy route? No, it's not that. Mm. GB British athletics take it back for idiots. 
and I've had enough. But that's 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 why I'm I'm asking but, because if they're taking, but they're not though. They're not taking me for idiot. Not taking you. I don't. They're probably not because I'm not. It's not like I am beating Posy consistently. Not yeah, it's not that. I'm in my own lane right now. I will get there. I'll be. I'm a patient guy. I'll get there. Yeah. If they don't want to give me recognition when I am there, then that's a whole different conversation. This <laughs> my whole answer will be different. I would even. This won't even be a thing. You'll be asking me, Kai, how's how's Ronnie for Trinidad? That's that's how it will be. Straight off. <laughs> Look at the whole UEL thing, university thing. I don't ramp. If you take me for idiot, I'm gone. I don't play no games, bro. So, yeah, that's how I run. It's cool. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So it's an honest answer. Because it it's it's been something that obviously I've questioned. You have a um, lot. The group has questioned, have. but I don't think you've ever given a concrete answer to it. You always try to find a way to. Because I never knew it. the answer to it. Because I've always thought, why? Damn, I could move, but I just I've seen a lot of people move and it hasn't benefited yeah. them. So I don't know if Trinidad's going to be the same. Yeah, I've never seen anyone move to Trinidad like that. Okay. So I can't judge you off something. I'll be the first person. I don't want to experience something bad. If you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I don't mind. Can Could it be back? one of those things <laughs> where <laughs> if you went with Trinidad, let's say they are times is slightly different like obviously gb tend to put their times lower than yeah the entry standard lower or higher <laughs> higher than the entry standard so if trinidad was higher i am um, lower than the british one mm. and you thought why not just go there because when i can go to the olympics with them i skip the british oh oh yeah what would you ever would you ever think of percent, that? yeah if that I, was an option today I'll most likely pick it. And that'll probably motivate me to do a great year. If they're like, Kai, we see you've got eligibility to run for Trinidad. Um, we can see you're you're in the mix to probably potentially run the standard, the Olympic yeah. standard. Come would we come? With your heartbeat. I'll even pay for my own ticket. Facts, just to say that I'm Olympian, one million percent, and then that's my career dot like I'm happy with my career. Mm. But yeah, Brit Shafflet is just taking long with man. <laughs> well, that's that's not them. That's not their fault. That's my fault. That's a me problem. That's me trying to balance work, training, and education all at the same time. So we asked QC this question as well. How do you think we could make this sport better? Because I think obviously we always have. We always, everyone always seems to have the same thing. Oh yeah, we don't the funding. Blah blah blah. It's not enough. But in your own way, how would how do you think we can? or they can make it better and more enticing for people to do. Because if I've got the choice of playing something else, yeah, and I've got athletics, realistically, I'm picking the other thing. No, of because course. the money in this sport is not all that. And if you're obviously, if you're winning, if you're, if you're getting gold every time, you know you're, you know you're balling. <coughs> but if you're not, then you're just part of the mix. You're just 20 grand a year. Just give, <laughs> exactly. Just give some athletes some type of not even incentive, but just some recognition. Even if it's like I don't know, just make it more appealing, man. I can't even describe it. Because even it. now with um, social media, like they could just use social media to make it better. Like you can see, af the um, American athletes before they even get out there, they've got fifty k on Instagram. Yeah, it's not. You, <laughs> you see, America is a lot bigger than the UK. Yeah, that's the thing. Like but everything. it's promoted better there, and though. It's, pro it's, promo <laughs> it's promoted better. Because I know some of the athletes, and I don't, like, without even going there. Yeah. But you know about them. But we don't, apart from the British trials, you don't really know about anyone. You just kind of, like, see faces. And then the more you see that face, the more familiar you get with it. Yeah. And then you start going, oh. And then it takes you a while, let's say, till you win something. And then goes, oh, let me follow that person on Instagram. Yeah. That's what people do nowadays. But they could do that earlier for athletes because I think you can get some kind of sponsorship from all the things through social media. You know now. where it starts from? As you can see, like with other sports, fans, fans are what bring the money yeah. as well. Fans are paid for football. I don't know how much for a football ticket, but it's a lot. But for <laughs> boxing, boxing is like 60 pound ringside for some basic dolly that I can even punch. 60, bro. I, I, I looked for the, uh, the Nigel Ben fight coming up Who next month. That? Um, he was an ex ex champion, welterweight. Okay. He's like fifty five, coming out of retirement to do one more fight against um, 
something something yeah. i can't remember the guy's name but i wanted to go watch the fight i was looking at tickets and i will kid you not to get a ringside seat it was expensive and that's nuts i i know that <laughs> that versus a, a track and field front side <laughs> ticket is minimal of course minimal but i think that's where it starts you need to not even bring fads but just be like oh like Start giving out tickets for free for competitions. Oh, here's a competition. Don't charge people to come watch British champs. Give schools tickets. Like you never know, you get the next Jesse this next. And then and then get empty seats at the champ. Like that's what you know I how bad that what, looks yeah, for the school. Because sure. everyone's saying on about Doha. I was we just are, gonna come on to that. We add it. We had we literally add that <laughs> empty stadium. I was at the British champs. Yeah, that's nothing new for us. No, but like <laughs> it was empty. I feel like they didn't know. I feel like they genuinely didn't know that it was on because yeah worldwide athletics some people can't get there because of time off blah 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 you only get you only get 30 days off you might have had your 30 because you got wife kids whatever yeah but on the initial first couple of days yeah it was was. empty from like day five day six to now yeah ram bare people in there so i feel like free tickets isn't it even even free tickets or people just didn't know they didn't know that it was on. I think as well, the camera position, because- That as well. I tell you, they won't let you sit in certain stands if it's empty, so they'll all push you- Into one to make, to it, make it look- That's basically I think the same thing, isn't it? Because the main Speaking stand on the um, on straight, yeah. is always packed out. You never see people back, sitting- Yeah, the back one, you never even see- mm. I didn't even notice that. You never actually see that on camera. Yeah. You just see the massive you never see sign. Like this. <laughs> you see down yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> you see running. the massive yeah. Muller sign, and you realize it's actually quite I'm empty. To see if there's any, if we've missed anything while we've been out here. Like it's actually quite empty, isn't it? Like, exactly. <laughs> but but nah, this still needs to be the most. Was he still doing it? Oh my <laughs> gosh, <laughs> bro! What's talking about doing? Is he in the camera? <laughs> yeah, he would. He would definitely be there. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean. <laughs> I, I would never ever bodybuild in my life, bro. What a dickhead thing to do. <laughs> Why is it a dickhead thing? <laughs> Man starving themselves, right? Just to look good for some people's opinions. Three people's opinions. And they're going to be different next week for another judge. It's literally how what you think is nice. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, I'm about to lose it, bro. I swear. <laughs> like, we at least retract. Whoever beats who wins. This one is literally on opinions. You're getting paid based off another Donnie's opinion on you. This People like social media. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put this chocolate spread peanut butter <laughs> thing on my. And it's, it's, when I see black people, oh my gosh, I'll get me started. Oh mate, I can't, I can't deal with today. Look, I, I just like your body, you know. I wanna get recognized for what you're doing. So now we're gonna do in the gym. It's going Tinder, bro. Bare thirsty <laughs> girls, bro. They'll comment. Oh, you got six pack. That's nice. <laughs> hey, we had a guest one, one weather training, innit? <laughs> just, just go one weather training. Do you do warm weather training? <laughs> do you uh, do it? Last, mm, last couple of years, I didn't. I went to Florida for like six weeks in 2015. Been Portugal every other year. Was it beneficial? Nah. No. No? Nah, I wasted a lot of money. Didn't have my coach out there. When I went to Portugal, it was very beneficial because my coach was there. When I went to America, huh, I parties. <laughs> Bought a lot of foods, bought a lot of not like actual eating food, and a lot of clothes. And I partied, so no, nah, it worked better. That was me. Other athletes, a different way, but mm-hmm. I was by myself for six weeks. A lot of funds, <laughs> yeah. Anything was possible out there. But when I've gone Portugal, when I've gone Europe, and like had my coach there and all of that, mm-hmm. it's been very beneficial. I don't work hard. Like there's certain times that would do a whole winter training and cram it into like a couple of weeks of training. Nah, mm-hmm. man, I think it's just there just to sharpen up and get ready for the outdoors. All right. But I'm hoping to go, hoping to go somewhere this year, man. Probably Portugal again. Ain't trying to go to Tenerife. We'll have to fight, man, for, <laughs> for a track. Is it a drone? That's a drone. Bro. It's a drone, isn't it? It's like... Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like... <laughs> Look, um, I want to say thank you for coming on the podcast. No worries, bro. Thank you for I having think me, man. it's a different insight to track and field this is coming from uh a realist bro any question you got for me i'm telling you real man i think there's a lot of a lot of beeps that might be in this one (laughs) 
couple of, couple of beeps. Couple Wait, of... you're actually beeping this? Because <laughs> I was going to say something so mad that you have to beep it. I see the one YouTube video, in it. Man, monet- like, demonetize the whole thing, bro. There, there's been a few where we like, okay, we may, we might. So I'm going to ask you some quick fire questions. Favorite training session? Bloody, just blocks the free hurdles. That's all I want. Worst training session? Anything above 100 meters. Anything above 100 meters? Yes. Have you ever done a two? <laughs> nope. You've done a four. You've never done a two? No. Okay. Favorite foods? Uh, post, pre and post. Ooh, <laughs> okay. And explain why I've said pre and post. Pre and post session or? Pre and post life. Okay. Pre has to be, ooh, you know, I miss bacon shark. Okay. You know, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's yeah. certain dogs that don't know what, what, what bacon R- shark is. Ashes, yeah. Ooh! <laughs> Bacon shark, yeah, pre, post, might be a little, a little vegan pad thai or something. Okay, cool. Favorite music? Uh, old school R and B, man. Come on, my man. <laughs> um, favorite training partner? That I've had. Yeah, I've had much training partners, but that's be my boy James Weaver, bro. Man, like Weaver. <laughs> All right, best holiday. Ooh. Florida. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, I said not even training. That was the sounds of Florida. Um, but I said, oh, stop it. My best holiday has to be um, Jamaica, definitely. I'm just going back home to Trinidad, I think. Anything in the Caribbean, anything with sun. Okay, cool. Fair enough. Um, no, like Dubai. Wow. Dubai is different, fam. That's uh, it. Yeah. I, I, I can't do it. I'm scared. You know what? I, I, I went by myself. Like I will get arrested. Nah, <laughs> nah it's not. Like, I feel like I will get arrested. I went on a date there. Yeah, I went on a date Tinder Dubai or Hinge. Huh? <laughs> you think I'm? I don't know. You're on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> You're on holiday. You might. <laughs> I'm, doing, bro. I'm asking you a question. Do I look like I use them apps, bro? Yes. <laughs> yes. I went on a date here, yeah. and. There was public, there was affection, not like in public, yeah. and they weren't that strict, you know, so it's not that bad. But yeah, you'll get, I don't know why you would get arrested. You'll do some suspect things. So yeah. <laughs> I start playing Soko in the middle of a, of, of the mosque. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> listen, they have Seasons Weekend, which is Soka in November. So if you're down, I'm down. That's where I go, you know. Nah, I got work. <laughs> I work in a school, bro. I can't. I, I already got three holidays booked. I can't so it's be right. taking, you work for yourself. <laughs> How can you <laughs> holiday book? <laughs> Yo, you work for yourself. Because of uni, man. But you work for yourself. Yeah. And your uni will upload the session on. <laughs> upload um, the up, session. Yeah. On, uh, <laughs> Google, yeah, Moodle. Google Classroom. <laughs> and, Google Classroom, you know. And, and you're good to go. Oh, Prezi. So you could do that on the, on the yeah, plane. True. Wi-Fi and, and all them things there. That's true. So, wish you the best of luck Thank going you, forward. Um, Thank you. I think I'm going to book you in for a recap early january all right i think yeah early january oh, so we can kind of see what's, what's when he happening. says that that means it's never happening this is supposed <laughs> to happen about the beginning of the year this only just happened now yeah but there was there was out so was, when he says january <laughs> we're talking next christmas food boy i'm already I'm, I'm, done track. time next year might know. have gone olympics who knows bro might have gone up conch i mean <laughs> No, you gotta beat that. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. Listen. <laughs> I mean, our guest has left the building. <laughs> he's, he's disappeared. <laughs> Guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna close this out now. Uh, this is another episode of Affiliates Productions. Thank you very much for listening. Um we'll be back very shortly. Um I'll coming up in a couple of weeks we're gonna have uh, on the show and we're gonna have uh, so please stay ready, look out for those and this will be uploaded very, very shortly. Thank you to our sponsors, um uh, YSN. Um if you look at the drop down below you'll be able to see the code to get some um, discount off for some of the products that they're offering. All right, cool.